Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for MacBreak Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is MacBreak Weekly, episode 487 for Tuesday, December 29th, 2015. The year's best. It's time for MacBreak Weekly. Hello, everybody. Leo Laporte here. And this is a very special episode of Mac Break Weekly. We have put together some of the best moments from the year gone by. And I tell you, there's some really fun, funny, deep, informative stuff. If you're a Mac Break Weekly fan, you've probably seen a lot of this. Maybe not all of it. I think you're going to enjoy. And don't forget, we'll be back every Tuesday for the brand new year uh, with brand new shows. So enjoy this best of Mac Break Weekly. And Happy New Year, everybody. All right, you ready for another... Uh, Another uh, quadcopter tour of the Apple campus in 4K video. Mm -hmm. This is the January is update. Or, Should I go to, let me see. Should we go to 4K? I don't know what it's going to look like. I mean, this isn't a, a 4K screen. and Give it a shot. People at home are watching it in 720p anyway, but all right. I'll look at the clarity in that stone. Oh, my God. It actually does look pretty good. <laughs> Here we go. The What are you looking at? Get rid of that. There you go. Here we go. This is the Circle Campus, the Infinity Campus. It's well underway. What you can do when you got $10 billion to spend on them. Nice. Mm. Nice. No bugs here. There's going to be a parking garage underneath. Uh, I'm sure, you know, the landscaping will make this look beautiful, of course. I love the music. It's kind of James Bondy. Yeah, George Lucas, you know, we. When I, when I worked at uh, Skywalker Ranch, you know, almost all the... You, you've been there, right? Yeah. Yeah, almost all the parking is all under the building. Yeah, smart. And that's But it, that's a sylvan environment. You're like kind of in the woods. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so are we looking back to one infinite loop? Is that what we're seeing? Or is he just showing off now with his quadcopter? <laughs> <laughs> it you is a little games. smoggy in San Jose. Look at I got to tell you, look at that 4K. Super crisp. There's another article somewhere about how uh, they agreed to uh, preserve a historic barn that was on the HP yeah, campus. Yeah, can you believe that? Mm. Crazy. And they, 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 according to the article, they took it apart board by board, numbered every board, numbered every fastener, are rebuilding it near one of the athletic fields on the new campus so that it will now be a, a working tool shed. With, with pride saying for the first time in, in, in years, it will be a working barn once again, holding the fertilizer, the manganese... <laughs> How old? Back, okay. will occasionally get, sleep there and get ready, Don. Get ready, Don. How old is that historic barn? It's like eighty years old. Ooh. <laughs> well, for the California kids. in America, you know, we no, we don't have anything. We're late bloomers. Old. What would historic be in Liverpool? Like entire housing estates that are older than that. Yeah, know, so. I know, yeah. and they're definitely not historic. Yeah, uh, well, I went past my brother's. My brother just moved. Went past a house and uh, had a seventeen nineteen up on the on the door. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's that one's getting old. on a little. You, you guys park your cars on top of the final resting places of six hundred year old kings. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, oh, yeah. This is all old hat. So just, do we dig up King Richard the Third or just go? Uh, you know, we got. Eh, he's in a car park. We don't. You know, they're, they're, we got plenty of kings and plenty of churches. We can deal with this. <laughs> so there it is. That's the. Um, I think we're still a couple of years off. Aren't and we're we? gonna get invited to, for a tour. I want to. Uh, this, that's what I'll tell you. Well, there's a the theater, isn't there? Yeah, that's where they're gonna have all the events from now on. If I have any sadness about being kind of somehow off the list, I'm not gonna use the B word, band word, but uh, somehow off the list is band that I won't range. get to visit this. Thank you, Mayithz, or whoever that is for doing this. You can you can visit the campus. Just you know, go, go visit thrift stores until you acquire an entire Domino's uniform. <laughs> Fit a pizza box with a ray of GoPro cameras. Candy gram. Like mustache. Well, especially especially now that you shaved your head because pizza gram. You, your signature locks are gone. And they won't recognize you. I want to start with not the watch because this isn't that wasn't there wasn't much new there, but with uh, the MacBook, which was rumored, uh, but the rumor came true. Yeah. All my dreams. It's all real. <laughs> Came through, and I was having a little fight in the chat room with some people in the <laughs> chat who said, oh, that's that's a crappy computer. Who would want a computer? We're talking about the new MacBook. Two pounds, 
uh, 16 millimeters thick, which is not much thicker than an iPad, really. No. Mm -mm. And uh, But one connector, the USB-C connector. Um, Jason, is that too few? I mean, you're I actually use you as an example. Although got, Serenity, I see you two. Both 11 of you inch are using chairs, 11 yeah. inches. Uh, you know, um, I would say, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that anybody who's in an IRC chat room watching a live stream of This Week in Tech <laughs> shows... Probably has a lot of wires Maybe coming. not the people who yeah. this product is, is for. I mean, yeah, this, this is not. the iPad of laptops. Yep. It's meant to be super simple. Um, it's meant to be the laptop that's at the edge of Apple's product line of laptops. It, it, the MacBook as a product means there's room for the MacBook Pro, right? I mean, that's the well, name. And they didn't get rid the of either the Air or the Pro. That's right. <laughs> Will they, Serenity? Is that is this kind of the beginning of the end for the Air? This might be the, the burgeoning of a new MacBook empire, uh, but I don't necessarily think that it's going to come in the next six months. Right. I mean, you... Apple spent a surprising amount of time on wireless specs during uh, during their presentation on how, oh, wireless is the future. You don't want to be tethered to wires. You want right. all-day battery life. You right. want wireless Beats headphones. Right. You want to, you know, you want to live a wireless life if you're using a laptop. But they're right, I um, think. No, I think they're absolutely right. I don't know if we're quite there yet. I mean, we were talking before the show. You were taking photos and then you were tapping, you know, using NFC to tap them to your right. phone. Wireless. Um, you, yeah, wireless, which is great, but it's a little bit harder to do that with a DSLR to a Mac right now. You know, right. there is an NFC support, um, and AirDrop doesn't exactly work with a Sony or a Canon camera. Um, so there are there are still things that, you know, you might need some wires for currently. And also, you know, there was a, uh, at, a at the event, Apple's like, all day battery life. And I'm like, wait, is this is this true? Are we going to get, you know, 12, yeah, 14 all, hours? The day just got shorter. <laughs> it's the same, it's the same 9, 10 hour battery right. life of the, um, iPad. Uh, that the, uh, the iPad and also the right. 11 inch Air, what the 11 inch Air starts at. You get it at nine hours? Now, the In 13, theory. The 13 inch MacBook gets uh, more. Yes. 13 gets like hours. 10 to 12? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. This is the adapter Apple's going to sell you. And I think if you take a MacBook home, you'll probably want to take home the $79 USB-C digital AV multi-port adapter, which gives you uh, HDMI, full HDMI out, mm -hmm. full USB, and power. So basically now with this little dongle, you plug this into the Type-C and you can power up, you can have USB, and you can have... Uh, Holy like crap, is that elegant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, Alex Lindsay, what is Meerkat besides a small... Desert dwelling uh, critter mm. from Africa. From Africa. <laughs> this is uh, so. This is meerkat, and okay. um, and uh, well, you can't. You, you you can see your meerkat, and you know why don't I? Meerkat. Why don't I? Uh, for purposes, uh, so you see what it looks like as you stream. So here's my so meerkat. Streaming. Yeah. So I'm I'm looking around and everything else. Now I'm in Rwanda from the, on my iPhone, and I'm streaming to Twitter. That and it Jason, took me show like my 40, show my. Uh, 42 seconds over the show you know to do this i mean like it was it's crazy you push uh, a button it tweets so right and then it tweets you see it who's tweets watching which is so cool I, I i actually really like that and there's a chat on it so that people are chatting uh that's to right me. here yeah from a from a social tie-in it's it's really really interesting and the fact that to be now i do a lot of live streaming and I know that, that impromptu live streaming does not usually yield very many viewers. Right. Uh, so the idea that in a couple of minutes I have 71 viewers is actually pretty good. <laughs> you know, I've got 500 you know, I, people that, watching this Meerkat stream right now. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So it's the. Um, let's see if I can spin this thing around. Yeah, but but I think that this is. Uh, and you I, know what's amazing? It's pretty, pretty solid. I mean, it works. It works pretty well. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I have to admit, I had it on my phone, and, I, and this morning on the way to work, uh, on the way to the school, I was just in the car, in the cab, and I just turned it on, and I just couldn't believe that it was coming out smoothly and working and and everything else. And so, so anyway, it is a uh, um, it's so a pretty Jason's amazing. So Jason's watching my meerkat <laughs> right, right now. What are you watching that on, Jason? How are you doing that? Uh, you have to resize the browser uh, to a portrait. Got yeah. it. Uh, format. So you can watch it on the so, browser. <clears throat> yeah, you can. See, so this is it <laughs> not, not resized, right? This is why this is the perspective we're normally used to having. But if you resize the window uh, to a portrait, then you and, get and much then better size. When you, so you can schedule a stream ahead of time, but or you can, and then it'll tweet out, oh, tune in as I did. Tune in to 12.50, Leo's right. going to stream. Or that you could just start a stream and it'll tweet it out. Um, yep. And does, does it continue to read to tweet? Like I've been on for forty minutes now. Does it continue to? People want to look at uh, Serenity. I'm gonna. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I'm, Get I'm, me I just off of there. One. 
Did you I, start one? I just You're doing it too. This, and this. this is like Meerkat Inception. Oh boy. Yeah. This is really cool. <laughs> now I gotta find that everyone, one. Everyone pointed the camera. Everyone pointed the camera yeah. right now. We'll, we'll have wow. a Meerkat. We're all broadcasting wow. our yes. individual shows now, Leo. You, you, you can do like Hi, live action exactly. bullet time. You got version. so many cameras around here. Studio. I know. So yeah. um, eight people are watching right now. What? So have you been using it for a while? No, no, I, I, I just, I, I've been hearing about it. Everyone keeps on telling me, oh, you got to look at, you know, because what I do, everyone keeps on telling me that I have to uh, look at Meerkat. And uh, <laughs> and so I finally, I had it, I, I downloaded it oh. immediately and I just didn't get around to it. And I, when I opened it up, I just thought it was so cool that, anyway, that's why it's my pick. There's there a little now bit of it serenities. There's a little bit of latency <laughs> on it. What is it, about half a minute, 40 seconds, something like yeah, that? Yeah, it's probably about yeah. that. Something like that. I mean, it's... um. I, I can't tell because you're not on, but we're looking at serenities now. There we go. Now, now we're looking at Alex. And that's Alex. Okay, here we, go. here we go. Here we go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna snap. Okay, I snapped. This is a little bit insane. It's your cat inception. We need yeah. a kick. The people who are listening to the audio only version of this podcast are completely confused. Oh, they're, confused they're very now. confused. I've got 15 right now. Yep. So I've got 28. I'm, I'm beating you, Renee. Peter Cohen. Oh, so you can hi, receive hi, hi. a probably about 15, a, 20 seconds. Yeah. You, you can receive a meerkat on a browser. You can receive it on a phone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it is uh, not Android yet. It's iOS only. And it really went viral uh, just in the last couple of weeks, uh, partly because of Product Hunt. But then yesterday, we saw that a number of people were going to Meerkat the keynote, which is kind of silly since it's already been streamed. It was Meerkat road rage because people were trying to Meerkat the same watch table and yelling, get out of my Meerkat way. Yeah. Oh, no. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There, was almost, like, there was almost brawls. Oh, that's oh, terrible. I'm definitely going to use this for uh, for Derby. This is actually, this is really exciting. So what's great about it is, yeah, you can do uh, kind of ad hoc streaming. We yeah. certainly spent a lot of money to design a streaming studio. I don't really need Meerkat since I spend plenty of time on streaming vi live streaming video. But <laughs> there's something personal and intimate about it, about it as well. So now I'm going to uh, meerkat Jason's meerkat. I'm meerkatting Leo, I'm meerkatting Jason. Wait, you wait, wait, meerkat wait. Meerkatting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how about that? Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Oh Maybe this God. is the way we should do the show from now on. I know, right? It's well, a multi-camera. You know, I, I, I do think that this is going to be something that's going to transform news. I mean, I think that's the thing. Oh, is yeah. Something's going to happen, and suddenly there's going to be meerkats. You know, it's, it's going to be a swarm of meerkats. You know, on, on a, uh, you know, on, uh, you know, those, those types <laughs> of things. There's the swarm of meerkats right there. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, exactly. Look at that. So the interesting uh, thing is that Twitter just bought a company that does exactly this. Is it called P right. Pumbaa? Mm -hmm. uh, an unf yeah, an, uh, it's it's Pumba. Periscope. No, it's Periscope? Periscope. Yeah, and uh, I think that unfortunately they just missed the boat because Meerkat has obviously snagged the. Uh, and everyone the, had. The and it is about Twitter. Without Twitter, it means yeah. nothing, right? They integrate it right into into Twitter. Remember, um, quickly, when either you or Callie would Let's say, "I'm touch on quick phones. right now." On yeah, the, quick. Nokia, I used quick. Nokia yeah. and, and social cam. Remember can Justin save had these? social cam. Yeah. You can save okay, now these? this is what's weird. You can save it to your phone, but what you can't do is save it to the internet. There is no it, Meerkat is well, a little bit like Snapchat. Whole, I mean, well, you I think, could I think post that also it somewhere, is, presumably, if you wanted to. Yeah, yeah, you could. Yeah, you could post it somewhere, and I think that part of that is also the quality of the video that you post will be much higher quality than what it would have recorded from the live stream, as well as that's a whole other problem of scale. So if they start scaling and they didn't have somewhere to put all those videos, they're now in YouTube's business right. of trying to manage all of that. So it took me it took me a second to figure that out. I was like, oh, right, they don't want to start that way because- No, I mean, that's I a very expensive that. thing to do is to yeah. serve all those videos. To drown the company. Josh uh, Sanders from Tidbits is saying he's watching all of our videos at the same time. Yeah. Uh, who is Adam Hanks? Josh, 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 Josh Sanders. Sanders. Oh, how funny. Very weird. Your conception, it's happening. Yeah. I have used all of these and I've used, you know, social <laughs> cam and- quick and, and all of that. Um, and I'm sure this will be just another flash in the pan. But they did do some things that- He's not meerkatting. He's not, I Andy's like Andy's totally not, not interested in, in, in this. Our no. business. Andy's, Andy's looking at us like that. Come on, Andy. Andy. He will not bend. No, I, it's I, like we just told him we're not going to college anymore. Here's the thing about what, uh, what I'm not going to college. I'm going to meerkat. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Really, uh, I, I, just, no. I just think that you should set yourself a limit that if the juggling does not work out after one year, <laughs> maybe you should <laughs> take your job just, just at your uncle's lumberyard. <laughs> no, what I what I actually really I just, like about I, I, this I don't is... Know um, how I, oh, go ahead. It's, <laughs> it's integrated... Yeah, sorry, chat room. I turned off my meerkat feed because I got Jason's now. 
but uh, I really like how easy this is to set up um, and how quickly that I can get a good stream yeah. going almost immediately and hook in with Twitter. There's like Ustream is nice, but there's the separate chat room and it's kind of insane. And I don't know, it's, it's complicated. If you want to stream anything good, you need to pay for a subscription. Like again, I'm thinking about roller derby here because my mind always goes to there roller derby. There is a kind of neat Live real time aspect to this and Live, an instant yeah. aspect mm. to this. Live streaming roller derby games is really difficult because you could do this on your. Yeah. You could attach this to your your, well, cam. your uniform. Oh yeah, I absolutely could. Yeah. Um. I mean, I'd probably put it in an otter box first. But... Jammer, jammer cam. <laughs> yeah. Jammer cam. No, jammer it's... cam. Who did invent Type C, Mark? Do you have any idea? Because Google is also taking credit. Right. So uh, John Gruber said that Apple had a large hand in it, and something about them coming up with it. But based on documentation available on the USB Foundation's website. It seems like a lot of different companies had a hand in it. But it is interesting that Apple was first to announce uh, actual shipping hardware with it, and Google came out just the very next day. And Apple does have a patent on something that looks a lot like a Type-C connector. Uh, patently, patently, Apple has a, 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 a basically a reversible cable, which seems from, you know, to be very similar. Um, this is a video from uh, Stefan Zwartling, but you can kind of see the patently Apple post. I have to see if I can find the original uh, post. Yeah, I heard somewhere. the same thing that Gruber heard. I mean, it definitely was a team effort, but you know, sometimes there are people who lead a team or have ideas or contribute to a team or just get the team going in the direction that they want. And this well, is very much the direction that they wanted. In an industry standard, you, you wouldn't expect one team. I mean, Apple worked with uh, Intel on Firewire. Uh, Underbolt. Underbolt. You know, 1348. Um, I don't know if Thunderbolt's a standard, right? But about that patent that you showed, I think that's actually lightning. No, oh, uh, is it lightning? Okay. USB shown in Patently Apple. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, some of those patent websites, they mix yeah. up uh, things that have happened years ago. Well, and as, as you know, uh, you can't credit a patent. Everybody patents everything. doesn't mean they're And that was the anything. same team involved with USB-C, yeah. as far as I know. So this is the PDF from the uh, USB three promoter group <laughs> good lord <laughs> could, could you have a more 1986 logo too that, that's, that doesn't inspire you the confidence super speed plus <laughs> is the type c on the macbook uh a three point it's a 3.1 connector isn't it it's the latest and to your point earlier leo there's some discussion about whether this precise broadwell chipset that apple is using supports the dual dual side ports or the architecture of the MacBook would allow them to have a controller on both sides because this right. is this, this was going for ultra thin ultra light not for yeah expandability and nor does it have two channel some USB 3.1 yeah. has two channel but this is I think one 10 I mean 10 gigabits is plenty but it but it's one 10 gigabit channel well, so you choose your compromises in you know in your design so some have raised the issue of um, USB is a somewhat dangerous interface We've uh, seen um, bad USB, it's called, uh, which is malware that infects USB firmware and can be used to then infect the computer it's put into. Uh, this is typically with thumb drives because, weirdly enough, virtually all thumb drives, even the most secure, have electronically erasable PROMs, yep. EEPROMs, that you could put firm new firmware in. Bad USB takes advantage of it by hacking the firmware of the USB and then infecting everything you plug it into. Now, I understand that the Apple power adapter does not have any, f doesn't have any firmware in it. You can't be reprogrammed, so it doesn't have that capability. Mm -hmm. The issue is, though, not Apple's adapter or even Google's adapter, but maybe going to a coffee shop, you know, hacker's corner, and plugging into their USB to charge might have an adverse effect. It's the well, cost of the... being a standard. Right. I mean, you want you yeah. want to have standard compatibility. Uh, it's not you. It's not unique to USB-C. It's not unique to Apple. The Chromebook Pixel is the same thing. Whatever Absolutely. Other people Anything. Anything Absolutely. USB. And, you know, the, it, it would be difficult to secure it. I mean, there are ways to hardware secure it, but then you break compatibility, especially with older devices. Uh, and it's something that it, you know maybe Apple could do a prompt on OS 10 the way they do on iOS, where it says, "Do you want to trust whatever you're That's plugging into this this device?" Uh, but Apple's pretty. I mean, they're pretty good at interfacing with the Intel. Um, circuitry. So uh, hopefully something will come of it, but it's it's the cost of using USB for business now. 
Well, but there's also a difference there because if you are really, really concerned uh, about security, and we're not just talking about I'm, I don't want to surf a porn site and get malware. I'm talking about I'm entering another country where I feel as though my laptop is going to be a target of something. If you have more than if you if you have a, 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 a different kind of port, then you have the option of simply not plugging. If you have, I'm sorry, if you have a separate port that's just for power, you have the option of never connecting a data. Uh, data device to that to that machine ever. However, given that there's only one port and it is the only way to get power into the thing, it would be possible for someone with an unusual interest in your machine to compromise your power adapter. Uh, and because what are you going to do? Like keep buying, a, travel with like ten fully charged up MacBook MacBooks and then just throw them out every time the battery dies? No, you're going to have to plug something in there at some time, and that's an opportunity for someone to get access. Now, obviously, we're not talking about a, a threat that anybody really. Is going to be is going to be uh, facing, but it's not a threat that nobody will face, and you like to have at least one option there. Yeah, it's like iOS, where you have just a lightning port, and juice jacking was common for a time, and that's why they created the trusted uh, device requester to begin with. So I imagine it, it's probably best to think of the MacBook as like an iOS, almost an iOS device, based on how it's set up and how the ports work. And so I think an iOS solution would be the best thing there. Tim Cook says, I'm giving it all away. The uh, article uh, in Fortune magazine says he's worth about $785 million. He's going to pay ten uh, to pay for his 10-year-old nephew's college education. And then whatever's left, <laughs> he will he will give away. This is in the this is in the tradition of uh, Warren Buffett and Bill Gates, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, who have all uh, committed to giving it at least half their worth away it's the, called the giving pledge um I, I don't actually tim cook's not on that list but it's in that same spirit yeah, we need to think about this a little bit longer though because i mean his nephew isn't going to go to college for another eight years <laughs> right and the way college costs are going Could 785 be. million dollars <laughs> might not be as much as it seems like just say it well, also, well, also, also if, if, if i knew i was getting that deal i would say hey guess what uh, guess, guess what uncle uh nasa has agreed to let me do a semester at sea in the international space station <laughs> that'll be 40 million dollars Hey, if I have anything left in my kids' college fund after their eight, nine, ten years in college, I promise to give that all away as well. <laughs> you, have, you have my word on it. <laughs> I think I'm, is, I think I'm a, running out already. Two years in. Uh, that is a pretty cool proposition, though. When you think when you think about what you could do if you have tens of millions of dollars to disperse, and it, it seems as though the least satisfying thing imaginable would be to simply. Let, let it be your children or your, your, your relatives' oh, yeah. problem after you die. The oh. idea of sitting there and thinking, what problem do I want to solve forever for some city or some institution? The idea that I'm going to put $30 million into an endowment fund so that this library or this educational system is is always funded so long as they don't screw things up like try to do, try to launch a startup or something like Andy, that. Andy, I'm just saying, <laughs> if you wanted to give away your entire Justice League action figure collection... Not hand it off to your kids. I know somebody would take it. That would be roughly my half my net worth, so that would be a very typical <laughs> gesture. He, uh, Tim Cook told Fortune he, started, he already has started donating money quietly, but he wants to develop a more systematic approach to philanthropy. And that's exactly what Bill Gates said. Bill Gates, uh, before he started being a philanthropist, while he was still running Microsoft, was often asked, you're the richest man in the world, why aren't you giving more away? He says, because I don't have the time to do it right. When he, the minute he retired, they started the Gates Foundation with Melinda, his wife, and now they are giving it all, or most of it. I think he wants to give 95% of it away. Um, I think that's great. More power to him. What are you going to do with $785 million, especially if you don't have kids? Buy a library or something. No, you make it do something. Yeah, again, it's, it's, I've, I've always thought that, not, not on that kind of grand scale, but how many times do you, like, open up a newspaper or, or open up a news feed and see that, oh, well, some church or some library had a, a snow roof collapse and it's going to cost them $7,000 to fix it and they're not really sure where it's going to come from. The ability to sit at your desk and say, done, here's a check, you're yeah, done. wouldn't that be nice? Problem solved. You, you, you're going to yeah. worry about this for three or four months. Nope, here you go. Check, done. This comes from uh, the, the really good uh, interview Adam Lashinsky did in uh, Fortune magazine uh, talking about Tim's, uh, you know, unique style. Um, uh and, you know, how he has, in fact, done very well. You, you know, uh, okay, it's silly me, but I liken it to Joe Montana and Steve Young. As a 49ers fan, you know, there was no greater quarterback 
than Joe Montana until you look at the numbers and you realize Steve Young was a greater quarterback than Joe Montana. This is this is uh, this is like the successor, uh, uh, you know, beating the master. Uh, un a stock has gone from a split adjusted fifty four dollars uh, to one hundred one hundred twenty six dollars since Jobs died. That's a market cap of seven hundred billion. Um, the cash hoard has more than tripled since Steve passed to one hundred fifty billion dollars and that despite the fact that apple's already spent almost 100 million dollars in buybacks and dividends something jobs said we will never do <laughs> <laughs> um 38 billion dollars of merchandise sold in china a market that uh was non-existent when steve uh left the company tim's done a great job and what's interesting he's taken i think apple into a new area with the watch into fashion we've talked it remains to be seen well, we'll see how that how it works. Yeah. Well, now, what was the term I was I, I was looking at a New York Times style section, and what was the term they were using for Apple the Apple Watch? Ah, Normcore. What? Normcore. 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 Not Nerdcore. So, nope. Normcore. Meaning meaning that apparently it's all fashionable, or you know, the specific type of fashion that the Apple Watch will be is not hardcore, not softcore, but Normcore. Just sort of normal. For crying out loud. Because <laughs> everyone can everyone can have it, and therefore it's not real fashion. According to Wikipedia, Normcore is a unisex fashion trend characterized by unpretentious and average-looking clothing. <laughs> that's that's what I say. New York Times Magazine, all over it. I know, I know nothing. I'm Normcore. I, I, I'm you, reminded that I know absolutely nothing because now <laughs> there is like, what if what? Geez, this isn't very stylish or fashionable or whatever. There's absolutely no trend represented by this. We have to call no trend a trend itself. There you go. <laughs> Here you go. This is a it's, picture it's, 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 of two people, one man, one woman, dressed in Normcore. This is also <laughs> this is also <laughs> on Wikipedia. Wait. Note, the note there's space available for an Apple Watch there. <laughs> oh, good heavens. Well, first of all, you don't button the top button. <laughs> That's not. Right. What is That's that? That's something. Canadian Everyone. Normcore. I think he's from Canada. I'm, I'm just saying it seems it seems as though this, this writer wanted to say that Apple like has come up with a really boring watch design, but they don't want to offend <laughs> Apple because they, they right. still haven't received the review hardware yet. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know who posed for this Normcore picture. <laughs> Skinny leg khakis, really? Yeah, I didn't even know they make those. Actually, those no, they're 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 just uh, acid washed jeans. <laughs> well, they're not, they're not pleated, so he's okay. They're flat front khakis. Flat though. front. There's something in his pocket though that's he, really he, uh, maybe maybe it's just the, the way he's holding like that dark iPad, but he looks like he's ready to be taken. Into the spaceship by his doomsday cult. <laughs> <laughs> it's the perfectly white sneakers that are the giveaway, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's the it's the it's the tapering to the sneakers that really sets that off. You know? Yeah, that's, uh, there's something about those 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 legs. I don't know. <laughs> really. Hey, you know, and, and and all they have to do now is just say, just show this picture and say, now in three styles. <laughs> <laughs> So um, I had a request. Um, someone asked about how to, um, what, what I use for forwarding slides, you know, for presentations. And so, um, you know, this is, you know, a lot of people, you can go to Radio Shack and buy those little, those little infrared things that only yeah. work about half the time. Yeah. Um, and so, so I thought I'd show the industrial version of that. So um, let me see if, I, and I have this new system I'm going to try to experiment with just one second. Here. So, so this is the company here. This is uh, DSAN. And as you can see that they, um, they, uh, you know, they make speaker timers and Wait, laser is this pointers coming and from you? This, this screenshot? This is coming from me. Yeah, Are you doing me. telestrating? I am. God, you're such a show off. So anyway, so, so the... Uh, this is coming over like, Skype. This looks, I mean, I can't believe this looks better than our <laughs> screenshots. <laughs> well, so... So anyway, so the uh, so if you if you look at it now, the Q lights are the what or what so I'm you actually use using. Meerkat, just give the e whole thing up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so the um, so anyway, but the the cool thing about it, if you look at it actually physically here, this is the um, this is kind of oh the pair. Oh my god! So <laughs> you're just trying to show up, Crane Cam Three Thousand, the future of. <laughs> this is this is the new this is the new uh, cam. So because because so this is the this is the controller. Now this will go about three hundred feet um, without really any trouble at all, um, and it's very simple to use. Um, you can even get one that doesn't have a back 
to really protect speakers from themselves. So um, now the problem with it is, is that you, know, that you don't give them a lot of control. And so instead of having them go directly to the computer, you actually go to this. Um, so, so this here is, if you look at this, what you have is you can decide that it's a master or a slave. That means it could follow another one. You know, so you could actually put these together to run a bunch of computers at one time. You can give it sound. So if I turn the sound up like this, you'll see it and watch, see the little, I don't know if you can hear that or not through my, my thing, but, but basically what that's designed for is if you, uh, if, um, if you want someone to go forward, you can actually have them do that without having the, the person who's upstage actually run their own presentation, which is very useful. And of course you can turn this light up and down. And um, so you can see that it's USB and you can actually connect this to two computers at one time. So, and the reason that that's useful is that and obviously what happens a lot of times in presentations is that, uh, is that you, um, uh, what happens in the presentations is, is that you have a primary and a backup presentation that's running to stage so that we can switch back and forth if one of them crashes. So anyway, that's, um, that's it. Do you, do you like my little system, Leo? What are you doing with it? What? <laughs> what are you doing there? This is how I, t oh, what am I doing to do that? Well, I'm impressed because, uh, first of all, it's on Skype. Well, and so it looks like you're, you have better quality than we have in studio. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's so number admit, one. How much bandwidth are you throwing at it? Um, well, I have the, uh, so um, my office has about uh, 300 down and 100 wow. up. So it's, it's, oh, okay. um, that, in here. that so explains it's, it. It's fire. So that's interesting. Yeah. So Skype will use, I mean, I, there must be a limit to how much Skype will use. Yeah. But it's using enough to give us beautiful images. Now, the other thing is, is that this is the new Skype TX box. So this oh. is, uh, yeah, so this is a straight SDI into a Skype TX, you know, 1U. Um, uh, so this is the, they, this is a company that uh, Microsoft acquired that was yes. doing this so kind of dedicated Skype hardware. What is it called? It was called Cat and Mouse. Cat and, and Mouse. Then, we looked and at it. it; was really expensive. It is. <laughs> 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 it's it, you know it, it is. Um, but but what my pr frustration was, I was tired of trying to emulate a webcam. You know, right. like like this this constant <laughs> process of trying yeah. to trick Skype into knowing what what it was at, and and I have too many clients and too many other things that, that wanted to use Skype that I just I needed to have a solution for it. And what what I have here is something that we're working on for classes. So this is a you know the I don't it's I wanna, very hard. see I wouldn't even need this studio if I had this at the house. You should see the rest of it. I next week when I'm on I'll. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll have the other camera system set up. I, it's just not, it just came in in the mail. And uh, I'll be able to, I can actually show the system because there's a, it's a, it's a science project right now. I, I have to rewire it because um, Sam actually, uh, Sam Squires came out and built it. And, uh, and then I tore half of it apart to get this Skype. So what do working. you use for a switcher? I'm using a couple switchers. Um, there's a, um, so there's a, uh, the ATEM, I have a two ME and a, and a and a television studio, so these are and, and so one of them is just letting me go back and forth between these sources like this. Yeah. And then the other one is once I get to this source, I have another one that is controlled by some control. Pick Quick, um, Jason, so I can, throwing a, throwing this a is cheesy like I can, transition. At least we could do that. <laughs> Star wipe. Yeah. yeah. Star and wipe. These are these are three different sources that I can bring in. I can't believe how good um, this. You know how hard it was it to. Yeah, you can't do that, can you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't. I can't do that. Yeah. I, I'm not yet. Yeah. Not yet. But now that I've seen it, I'm, yeah. think about it. We a spent. Bit. Oh, oh you yeah, can't do that, can you? <laughs> we spent so much money at Tech TV and so much time and so much effort. You remember this shooting screens because there was yes. no. <laughs> I remember it. <laughs> there was I no way, and so we actually had a camera operator with a expensive camera pointed at a screen and you had to yes. be very careful about pulling the focus in and out because it would moire like crazy and you remember yes. that now you just yes. go like hey, well i push a button here and then. well and, I and you can tell us straight i don't have yeah well yeah that, and that's just a yeah so the um and i can do zoom ins on the screens i just haven't set up the i'm just DVDs. going home right now and i'm gonna buy whatever <laughs> you have <laughs> and i'm i'm going home <laughs> We're going to close the studio, and I'm just going to go home. Well, Alex, be, 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 ready, be ready for a package to arrive from, uh, from Petaluma. It's going to be about a sign about this big reading Twit East. <laughs> I, I am so impressed. That is really amazing what you're doing there. That's really great. That's anyway, really great. We're, just, we're just having some fun. I'm so. just teasing it. All right. We're uh, three out of four wearing the watch. The fourth is sitting in a soundproof booth, so he won't be tainted by our opinions.
I just got a new a new Deanna Domero CD came in just today. Oh. Be, I will be listening. I will be listening to it during the conversation. I'll, yeah, be, um, <clears throat> I'll say something right up front. It is easily the best. Now I've worn all the smart watches, including the weird Galaxy Gears and the, you know, all the different watches. And of course, I'm a fan of Android Wear and have been wearing quite a bit. Um, I have. I'll say. I'll say something right up front. I mean, the, in looks, in terms of looks, it's great. So I've asked a number of people. Some people say, yeah, it still looks kind of geeky. But yeah. I think that I think it looks great. I like the Milanese loop, but uh, there are lots of different kinds of bands. Um, and the uh, the other thing, and DisplayMate confirmed this today, but I was my, uh, but I've been thinking this all along. It is a great display. This is uh, Apple's first OLED display. Uh, all the Android Wear watches are uh, LCD, I believe, IPS LCD. There are some Samsung OLED displays. I think many of the Samsung watches use OLED, but. OLED has some real advantages. First of all, incredible contrast. The blacks are inky black. The whites are white, white, white. And that also saves power because only the the white, the white lighter dots need to be powered. You don't need a backlight for the whole thing as you do on LCD. You could just light the part of the screen that's being used. But it, it also gives you an incredible looking high-res display. Well over, It's over 300 dots per inch. I did not know that, but uh, they broke out the calipers at DisplayMate. And uh, even the 38 millimeter is over... Uh, 300 dots per inch, I think, or close, to, no, maybe 277. It's pretty good. So just from cosmetics, you know, just looking on the outside, not at the software, but just at the outside, I think it's a it's a good-looking watch with a very nice-looking screen. Uh, Adam, what do you think? Yeah, I, I, I agree with that a lot. I uh, was really actually impressed. The flora, flora elastomer band. Uh, you like the rubber band. Well, how comfortable it is. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I wore a Pebble for the past, I think, over a year. And so, you know, I'm moving from the from the Pebble to this, and I've been uh, very impressed just with the wearability of it. Yeah. Um, I want to ultimately get a, a band. I just didn't want to pay the Apple tax on some of the bands. I'd, I'd like to you have a You think there'll be third-party bands? I guess it's a standard. I think there's going to be a ton. And yeah. there was some rumors that Apple was going to have a certification program even, you know, oh. so... Um, I'm looking forward. I want to get something in probably in leather. It'd be nice to have a couple different options, but you know, my budget doesn't allow for a $150 uh, classic buckle band. <laughs> Those are beautiful though, aren't they? They're very, yeah. all the bands are very nice. Like I said, yeah. the, this, you know, it, it is technically, I guess, rubber, but whatever the material is, doesn't feel like any other rubber strap that I've ever worn on, on a sport watch or a swatch. I mean, it's really soft and supple and, and very, very comfortable. To Why'd wear. you get I the 38? Um, I was going for the 42, uh, and that's in why I'm my, wearing the 38. In, <laughs> in my, well, in my, in my, household, my wife's, uh, we do some, we, we do some pass down, uh, yeah. you know, of technology. Yeah. And so my wife didn't want one day one, but when I asked her sort of last minute, you think you'd ever want it and then we started talking about some of the features she said you know i i may so i went with the 38 uh because she did, really didn't have any interest in the 42 and i know i'll be upgrading you know whenever the next one comes same out. with so me same I'll with me to the 42 then and i want to be able to send lisa my heartbeat and all that stuff <laughs> right it's, you know that's another one of those features that you know i thought right out of the gate oh come on you know this is not going to be a thing but um uh, you know, it, it's actually kind of an interesting... Have you been uh, able to send touches and heartbeats to people yet? <laughs> yeah, my brother. <laughs> yeah, isn't that sweet? I mean, I like him a lot, but... I'm sending know. them to a stranger. The only other person I know with an Apple Watch is some some guy that uh, we've emailed. I'll I don't even know you. who it was at first. See, I'm sending a heartbeat right now. It's a brilliant plan to breed the next generation of Apple fans who will buy anything because the only one you can send your heartbeat of love to are other people who bought an Apple Watch at 30 seconds past midnight. That's exactly it's right. Diabolical. In fact, that, that I, Lisa, I can't send her one yet. She's letting me wear her watch. She doesn't have one yet until I get mine, which is in a couple of weeks. Uh, so I'm sending heartbeats to strangers, drawing little pictures. Look, he's drawing me a picture now. <laughs> <laughs> um. Real quickly, I'm curious, Leo, on the size. You know, I've been I've been wearing that pebble, which I think is about 50 millimeters. I mean, it's it's pretty big. Yeah, same and thing I, with the um, the Android Wear is much bigger. Yeah, and when I went to do my try on, you know, I got to try on both, and I was pretty worried and disappointed because I was like, oh, I think I really wanted the 42. Um, but I think a lot of that too was just having the two sort of side by side and having the comparison. Because now after wearing this, I mean, it feels fine. I think I still want the the slightly larger just for me but it doesn't feel like 
a compromise, I guess is what I, I was worried it was going to feel like I had really compromised on the screen. And I, I'm not feeling that way after having worn it for a few days now. Yeah. Can, I, can I make one point that uh, I actually had to take a picture of uh, when I bought this watch like five or six years ago, I was waffling on this a lot because it is larger than any other watch I've ever bought. I used to have like a, a Timex that was probably 38 or a little bit smaller than that. And so this, even this seemed like it was going to be an enormous watch. But after about two or three days of wearing it, I realized that it wasn't a big watch. It was just bigger than what I was used to. So if mm -hmm. you're people who are trying to decide between 38 and 42 and they think that, gee, I think the 42 is going to be a lot more readable, but I'm kind of thrown off by how big it is. Consider the size of the watch you're wearing right now or the fact that you don't wear a watch, and that might help you to decide. I want yeah. to thank Stephen uh, Hall, who's been sending me heartbeats and drawings and stuff so I could, <laughs> I could demo. So, 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 Leo, of all the things that people have been sketching to you, how many of them are non-broadcastable? Or, <laughs> do, or oh, was so Tim many. right? Do people, just, do people just do pictures of kitty cats? Um, it's, it's not that big. You really can't draw any uh, genitalia. At oh, least. I bet oh yes, try. you can. Yes, you can. <laughs> yeah. oh, so many, so many genitalia. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Five dollar donation to the World Wildlife Fund every time somebody. <laughs> okay, I'm going to give you all a chance to yell at me now because I'm going to tell you what I think about the guts, the insides. I mean, it's beautiful, and I'll acknowledge that it's a great screen. Having worn, and I'm curious what you guys have to say. Having worn uh, smartwatches now for more than a year. Um, I, I'm a little disappointed. This doesn't seem groundbreaking. In fact, in some ways, like the heartbeat in the drawings, that is not a selling point, uh, frankly, for me. No. Um, it's, it's I think it's a little busier than it ought to be. There's a lot of, you know, manipulation and fiddling uh, to uh, to get it to do things. Um, and I, I just feel like it's not a breakthrough in the sense that it's, in, in, in a particular regard, better than Android Wear or the watches that have been out there. I think the screen is better than the Android Wear screens. It's nice to be able to take and, and make phone calls, but it's not something probably I will do a lot of. Um, I just, I don't find it particularly impressive. It's not bad. If you want a smartwatch, it's a good choice among all the smartwatches, but I think most people will not find this of, of great utility. Uh, uh, and I think a lot of people just, I mean, don't feel bad, in other words, I guess is what I'm saying. If you didn't get one or you don't want one or you can't afford one, because I don't feel you're missing a lot of functionality. Agreed? Disagreed? Go ahead, Adam. Fight me. <laughs> Beat me up um, on this. I think it has a lot more functionality than my Pebble did. I, I have not worn an Android Wear, so I can't really compare to well, that sort of thing. Let me say this. That no, no, no watch that works with Apple is going to do as well as this because Apple just locks everything down. And so only Apple really has access to all the features of the phone. Uh, yeah. Android Wear with Android, I think, gives you as much uh, uh, functional, almost as much, in, in some cases not. You can't send a heartbeat. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, I think some of it too, though, is early stage and and functionality. I, I definitely feel like there's some bugs. There's some things that Apple will be able to tweak maybe in the software, in the UI. I'm not super happy with look how at I this. have to navigate through this glances. This is insane. Come on. Well, this is <laughs> You have way more apps installed. I think that's another thing is I think paring down the number of apps that you're interacting with to really those ones that are essential, that really helps a lot. So I think yeah. some of it is is tailoring the watch to what you need it to do. Right. I've certainly done really, that with really glances important. because you yeah. can have so many glances that the problem with glances is they're individual pages and you and you have to find what you're there's no quick way to go to a glance that you want. You have yeah, to little, swipe through them. Yeah, I, I hope they can uh, tweak that. I mean, you can go into the settings and you can move them or you know, sort of change the order around and, and prioritize them. So maybe the ones you access most frequently are closer to one end or the other end. Um but yeah, I found that a little bit tricky to navigate. But I mean, these are things that, that can really be overcome as far as like the day-to-day -day utility and, and functionality of it. I'm finding, you know, as days go on, it's it's slowly integrating it its way into more and more okay. parts of my day. So okay. I think for somebody who works out, um, there's some real advantages to it. Let me see if I can manage to navigate to the workout <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was going to say that the the workout stuff for me has been uh, you know I was using the Misfit app on my Pebble which this was is great. really nice yeah but again this is a, this is a lot nicer and and tracking those I'm not so sure about the uh, the awards that they give out I haven't quite figured those out yet yeah they're little <laughs> uh, weird little 3D uh, images are things. strange yeah. yeah the first one I got was looked like a Target but there was no words there was no you know congratulations it was just like spinning 
I guess metal. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's a yeah, <laughs> a little funky. But so here's an outdoor cycle. Oh, somebody's tapping me. Okay, this is another issue. Also, do you find it slow to launch things? Like I spend a lot that, of time that's watching. The other it. thing, they need, they still need to tweak the software a little bit. I've had some hangups and crashes, most specifically with uh, some of the Siri functionality, where it'll just sort of go dead for you know several seconds. I actually seconds. had to reset the watch because it was stopped doing my heart rate. For three yeah, days. but again, this is all early stage stuff. You know, I mean, version version one, it's really, really good. I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to focus too much on the negatives because I'm, I'm pretty I positive about it so far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know. Well, and the main reason is I think that I want to make sure people don't feel the any any FOMO or need to rush out and get one. Yeah, and yeah. I, I the thing the thing that I've been saying is that. I don't think it's going to, I think it's going to take us all about a month or a month and a half to really come up with longstanding opinions on Apple Watch because right. developers have not figured out how to write apps for it yet. And so now, now that they see it in the flesh, they know how to adapt their apps to make it more relevant. People have never, most of the people who are buying this have never worn a smart smartwatch before. So they're not used to how to integrate that into your lives. Right. There are a lot of things that really, so a lot of first impressions are going to be valid as first impressions, but maybe if you circle back to those people in a month and ask them the same questions again, they'll have very different answers. I think that uh, estimation of Apple Watch is probably going to go up a little bit as people, uh, as users and developers figure this out. Johnny Ive kicked upstairs, chief design officer. The announcement uh, was, I think, originally made by Stephen Fry in, a, in an interesting but quite discursive article in uh, on The Telegraph. <laughs> Uh, and then a memo came out from Tim, Tim Cook, uh, confirming that uh, Johnny Ive is now uh, chief design officer. Not sure how that, well, I guess he doesn't do hands-on because... Got rid of his managerial duties. Yeah, that's... Yeah. All, all, all the stuff that I've read indicates that it's more of a now he can he can just be this free floating cloud of design that descends that that floats over the entire planet of Apple stuff, including retail, and just simply descends to rain design upon something and doesn't have to like oh and now we need some someone needs their 1099 countersign yeah there's other people who can do that now it's just basically how how many times should the fork in the new apple apple cafeteria on, on the spaceship uh, campus be right now it was like three really different reactions one from the people who are optimistic was wow he's finally ascending he's shedding all those managerial duties he doesn't like and he can focus entirely on design the pessimists were like well this is his first foot out of the door he's giving over his responsibilities he's not going to be at apple forever and then the analysts were like oh super clever way for apple to hide his salary because he has no management duties oh. he's not a policy maker and there's no disclosure needed under fcc guidelines <laughs> oh that's an interesting twist on all of that yeah richard what what was his uh, do you know what his salary is <laughs> until july 1st they haven't reported it since 2009 even though it, oh. it looks like they should have because he had managerial duties when he was promoted to senior vice president and there was i forget what it was but one of the one of the people on forbes was saying that there was probably a negotiation going back and forth with the fcc saying sorry the fcc S -S -S -E -C. F -S -E -C, sec sec yeah saying that well you have him on your corporate front page and that's not matching your disclosure statements and he does have all these direct reports and that's not matched and that uh. is a policy making job and maybe they decided to move him out before that became an issue. Why hide it? Is it because it's like forty million dollars? It's competitive. It's competitive information. They said it's like the highest paid uh, trader at a hedge fund. He's not an officer of the company, but he's one of the most valuable you assets of that company. You don't need to know what Johnny makes to know that Johnny is critical to Apple. He's just as poachable now as ever. Yeah, but no one has well, who could to offer him. But who could poach him? Right, Mike. Yeah. Like there's, the, the, I don't think it's the name of money. Like the guy probably owns quite a chunk of stock in Apple, so right. the money is just going to build forever. But you've got to have a like. There has to be a reason that he would want to join your company. And as a designer, what better job is there exactly. than his Disney or Lego? Yeah. I've, I've heard I've heard some interesting Lego. talk. No, I don't see Johnny. I've oh, <laughs> well, that's that, that's the ultimate thing. You, 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 you talk about quick turnaround prototyping. You, you, there's 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 Lego and there's nothing else. These are the thinnest bricks we've ever made. Richard course, Howarth course, or Howarth will become VP of Industrial Design. That means he's hardware design. He uh, he's part of the uh, original iPhone team. Uh, Alan, Do this concerns me a little bit more. First of all, I was concerned when they say Johnny was in charge of software. That worried me a little bit. Alan Dye is now going to be VP user interface design. That's both desktop and mobile devices. That's software. That's yeah, he's, you know, and he's the guy who did the fabulous Apple Watch UI. 
I'm and being sarcastic. Seven. Yeah, he was he was brought over from marketing, which is why there was all that hubbub at the time about marketing taking over. But he was he was doing marketing design uh, at Apple, and he moved over. Greg Christie was the longtime head of design at Apple, and he started phasing himself out. He was more of the Steve Jobs skeuomorphic era, and originally pioneered the iPhone interface and all those things. And as Christie and uh, Baz. I'm forgetting his last name, Erling, started winding down. Uh, Alan Dye started moving in, and he was doing with working with Johnny on this new, flatter, simpler, more retina-friendly design. Well, I'm not against age. that. I think that's all good. But uh, do, do you think that the – maybe it's just me. Do you think the Apple Watch is a paragon of incredible software UI design? It's an I'd, experiment. I would say it's a playground right now. Yeah. Well, it shouldn't for, – for $400 minimum, it shouldn't be a playground. Um, but it's it's interesting to look at some of the history behind um, these guys. Uh, Alan uh, uh, started off in like just in fashion design. Uh, he was uh, I forget what brand it was for, but he was a, a, like a high end sort of accessories maker. Uh, he started at Apple in 2007, and he was working exclusively pretty much on iTunes and the iPod. Uh, so he he, he uh, if if you're getting started on the iPod at two, in 2007, they were, you were definitely being slotted in. Uh, on the on on the on the top products for to to start off. Well, with. he did the box and, for the iPhone. <laughs> yeah, that's, well, that's, let's be clear. No, well, he okay, did the okay, box. But, that's, <laughs> but that, well, I, I, you know, in every single unboxing video I've done, most most of them are tongue in cheek. It's a good because box because I, I think boxing videos are, are ridiculous. But every time you look at the packaging that anything that Apple makes comes in, it's like here 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 is the box for for Apple Watch, and the corners are completely sharp. You can't. Every time I open up a box, it's like, look how look how tightly this is fitted, and how long it takes to get gravity to simply drop the thing off of the uh, out of the container. This is just one. beautiful. Like I, I'm 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 really not a fan of the Apple takes sure that the that the other side of the fence is painted just as well as I'm not a fan of that statement. But there are times where you see, man, they put so much work and effort into just how nicely this box is going to be, given that it's going to be your first introduction to this thing you've just paid uh, a lot of money for. By the way, you, Andy just sent me a link <laughs> to a original packaging box only eBay listing, <laughs> fifty bucks. I just yeah. threw out a hundred bucks worth of boxes. Well, you had the you had the and, yes, the addition the uh, sorry the stainless steel one, Leo. That's probably two hundred bucks. Oh! <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, is it they're too late to recall the recycling bin? <laughs> There hasn't there hasn't been any bids on that one, but I'm I'm continuing to like do searches, and here's one that there's already four bids up to ten bucks. Here's another Who one with buy uh, the box. It's free people money. People are fans. Of, people are fans of Apple. And I should cool have box. wrapped people, them up and given like them, given the empty boxes to my kids for Christmas. The one the one, <laughs> the, the, the one thing you can definitely say you will def unlike the th unlike the contents you will definitely be able to use that box in two years. So <laughs> maybe it's the better value. <laughs> All right, time to talk music. A challenging world. Let me set the stage here because Apple is the number one retailer of music. iTunes and digital downloads at iTunes dominate the industry entirely. But the world is changing. People have been moving. 100 million people listen to Pandora. 60 million people listen to Spotify. And uh, you're seeing dramatic, almost precipitous drops in record sales uh, over the last few years. Apple obviously recognizes they've got to do something. They buy Beats with Beats streaming service. Mm -hmm which on its own was not wi wildly successful, around 110,000 subscribers when they bought it. Compare that to 100 million or 60 million, you get an idea that Beats was a late to the party and perhaps not the strongest. But uh, I think they also felt good about getting Dr. Dre, getting uh, Jimmy Iovine, and maybe even more importantly, getting Trent Reznor, um, and designing something that they could... Is it replace... You feel like it's replace iTunes and, and purchases with... That this is, I, I feel like people don't buy music I think much they're, anymore. They're live, some people do and some people don't. So there's Steve Jobs always said people want to own music. Well, but that's I, changed. Some people do that and some people ago. don't. And and I think what Apple's trying to do is have it both ways. You can buy music from them. You can stream all your music. It, it also integrates essentially the features of iTunes Match. So if you have music that's not on their service, it'll get added and then you'll have access to it too. That, I wasn't clear. They didn't, weren't clear at the presentation, but they do say that on the webpage. Right. right. That, 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 that is interesting. That is what Google does now with its all access music and Amazon does with its music. It allows you to upload and iTunes Match does. Sure. But it allow, but now they allow you to upload and stream via their uh, new music service. Yeah, so that that way, if, if that's a competitive advantage. If Taylor Swift weren't on this service, and maybe she will be, but you she's not on the it. others. You and you buy her album, 
it would just be integrated with every all the other music. I the use service. the Beatles as an example. It's the yeah. only way you're going to get Beatles on a streaming music service. Right, is that you you bought them on CD or on iTunes and they will just show up. Yeah. But otherwise, I I think Beats Music is a is a good service. I, I love how they spent time talking about it's the thing I liked from their music presentation is they talked about curation. They talked about using human beings to pick playlists and pe it's people who understand music who are trying to go beyond the algorithm and Beats as a music service was really good at, is until the end of the month a really that was its thing that it was That was its at. thing. That's what Jimmy Iovine stepped forward before when they founded yeah. Beats and said, we believe we want to bring the human back into the music yeah. business. <laughs> so it's, it, I think it's a good service. It was late to the party and hasn't really caught on, but I think Apple... It's also hobbled by I, its association with AT&T, yeah, I, I think, think. I think it's a smart move. It was a smart move for Apple to take it. I think rebranding it is just fine, but I think that they're, they're, they're inheriting something some that's of the good Beatsy feature. features, like the sentence is gone. Yeah, yeah, I'm, like. I'm, I'm, I'm hanging with my keynote yeah. Buddies waiting that was for the unique Tim thing. Cook. They're also <laughs> taking away the Beats Android app. They won't have Android till the fall. Right. Um, uh, you know, that's a big audience. It's like not having a Windows app. They will have a Windows app in the fall as well. Will they take it away or will they just leave it there? We don't know. Yeah, maybe they'll leave it there. For, I have to feel... I have to, it isn't even going to be a compatible service. Yeah, when I this launches uh, in yeah, 8.4 exactly. at the end of the month, June 30th, I have to feel like the old Beats is going to just say, okay, Goodbye. switch over, yeah, bye. It could be. And for Android users, that's going to be okay. Bye bye. Yeah, yeah. Well, if that, that's what they're doing, then. Well, and, and for the Android, the Android app is also hobbled in that there's no free access. If you are, you can only get the. So there's a number of features that if you're using it on iOS or on your Mac, you can get for free. You can listen to Beats One. You can get some of the uh, the streaming the radio stations with limited skips. But that's not available as a tier for Android. You have to be a paid subscriber you know, to get anything. It surprised me that Beats 1 was free because that was another differentiator is we're going to have a 24-7 global radio station with three of the best-known disc jockeys in the world who I had never heard of. And yeah. and uh, and that was a differentiator. But that's for you get that. Every Apple user gets that. Well, but that's a, it's a great way to sell Introduce music it. and to get people yeah. into the service, right? That's a great way to say, look, we're giving away all this music for free. We've got people who are choosing it. We really want to appeal. Um, and I get it both because I'll subscribe to Spotify right. for the same right. price, ten bucks a month, mm -hmm. and the, I get Beats One Radio. But sure. the family price is amazing, right? I yeah. mean, fifteen bucks. Fifteen bucks a month. Uh, that that's what's You're willing me. to use iCloud Family Sharing. Which I had <laughs> some yeah. people have had up. Oh, you down, have to use Family Sharing to, to do yeah, that. It's tied to, get to that. your Family Sharing Ooh. plan. Yeah. I had heard that The Verge said that Spotify was going to respond to that with there a was similar price. A rumor that. I don't see an yeah. announcement. I don't think they've done well, that. That happens when you've got deals with labels, right? Is that you go right. back to them and say, "Cut us that same, that same deal for family." And, and the and tit for tat, gets. by the way, was they no free tier. I mean, yeah. that's that's what the labels didn't like. That's what Taylor Swift didn't like. Mm -hmm. Is the free tier of Spotify and Pandora and all these others. Well, that's and very Apple's Apple, not gonna right? Do that. That's very Apple to just say, "Look, pay us." That's what we're here for. Yeah. Is you pay us money. There will be some free <laughs> stuff. You well, said Radio, Radio One Beats is free. One, Beats One is free. Uh, some stuff. That you iTunes Radio is not going away. There are still going to be curated stations, and you will be able to listen to them for free with limited skips, much as you can now on iTunes Radio. So they do have a free tier, there really. There is some free stuff, but it's it's less control, right? You can't just go and play any song, I think. Well, Pandora's it's like, like Pandora, that, too, right? Yeah. Closer not, to Pandora than Spotify. Not Spotify, right. yeah. Yeah, I, f I found that really confusing. I mean, I, I was expecting to see one just sort of tight ball of music features but now I'm thinking, okay, so I've got the radio station, plus I've got iTunes Match, plus I've got Apple Radio, plus I've got curated playlists from other people, plus I've got a social media platform. I mean, it's just, it really just seems like, I, 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 if I understand what Apple's going for, I really think that they don't want to leave anything behind on the plate. They want to, if there is a way that somebody is experiencing music, they want to have a product that will uh, that will work with whatever you're going to do. Because they don't, they don't want people to leave the Apple ecosystem in order to, be, to to get internet radio, or they don't want to. They like everything except for uh, a curated playlist. So they're going to still be dipping into Spotify for curated playlists. But it made it really, really difficult to follow the story that they were trying to tell yesterday. And it's really it, to. All that I was hearing was, okay, we've got that feature from Star Spotify, and now we've got this feature from this other service you're familiar with. So just, it, I, I don't know what to think. There's, a, it just seems like I, I, the, the note that I was, the, the note that I have in front of me, taken at the time was that, okay, you've given me a lot of reasons why this new music system is great for Apple. I don't think you've given me a reason why it's yeah. going to be great for me, the customer. Well, I think the, the the service could be good, although getting all that stuff in a single app is going to be really hard. Um, yeah. I think there's no question. Has anybody I, seen the app? 
They showed the music app on iOS. They yeah. have not shown it. So I will be integrating iTunes, iTunes on the, on Mac, the Mac, which is already, already a kind of a. It gave me great hope. My heart started pounding a little bit when they showed what looked like a very different iTunes on the screen, and then they didn't say anything more. But do you think they've rewritten iTunes? Well, I sure hope so. I hope so. But yeah. this newest version <laughs> isn't even that old, so it's unclear whether they're ready to throw that all out already. Yeah. I think iTunes I is gradually becoming an operating system. <laughs> yeah. And sentient. It's the Certainly. Emacs. It's the Emacs Soon, of yeah, music you'll players. you'll be able to get mail from it. But Andy's yeah, no, absolutely they, right. They didn't They didn't make the case. And that that's one of my great faults with that section of the keynote is not only is it long and boring and, and overstuffed and self-indulgent and very not Apple keynote, but they have a very interesting, complicated service that they need to make the case for. And instead, that was sort of like, here's Drake. He'll tell you some stories. And <laughs> didn't they didn't make the case that they needed to make. Story time with Drake. I don't want to blame Drake. I thought he was no, very well spoken. I liked he, how he natural a, he he's was. Very, he's he very did. good on stage, but he, he did. didn't have he was, what he was doing made no sense. His lead in was for something that he didn't talk about. Yeah. And he was in the middle of kind of a, a disaster of a presentation. Yeah, I thought he had dignity and told an interesting story, but it wasn't what out it didn't serve Apple's needs it and didn't. they didn't set him up properly. So yeah. it made him look like he was off the reservation a little bit, which right. is bad for him. So, yeah, it was a mess. And it's a shame because this is, Andy's right, this is a complicated service. They really need to explain how iTunes and this service and the streaming and the radio all work together. Yeah. And, you know, they didn't. And everybody came out going, I don't understand what this product is. And that's a failure. To set the stage, there's Drake. To set the, who, hey, by the way, we want, all want love his jacket. Love the jacket. Yeah, yeah. yeah we all want his uh, rainbow uh, apple. Logo. No, he's really likable. He, he yeah, was, you know, he you was. Know, it was not his fault that he was... In the middle he of... He just was off message, I guess. Huh? Yeah, and that, you know... It's unclear you know, whether that's you, him or Apple. It, yeah. Or uh, you, it's, you put it's, musicians weird, on though, stage, they're not going to be on message. I got bad news. Yeah. Even yeah. Jimmy, Jimmy Iovine was not really on message. <laughs> no. He was not. He was on something. He was on something. <laughs> <laughs> what a strange story. I feel like there's so much more to this story than they're telling us, don't you? Taylor Swift on Sunday post a, posted a blog post. We talked a, a lot about it on uh, This Week in Tech. Uh uh, to Apple, love Taylor. And like five minutes later, Eddie Q, the, the the post was to uh, please Apple. Uh, I'm not don't I'm not gonna put my music on your uh, new music service because you shouldn't be doing three months free and not pay anybody for the three months free, which was apparently I, I guess Apple's plan. Uh, others had protested. Adele's label, an indie label in Britain, had protested. But uh, when Taylor does it, man, those Swifties. <laughs> Within about, I don't know, a couple of hours, uh, Eddie Q was on the phone to Taylor, apparently. He said he'd been talking to her. And then uh, later that night, he tweeted, Okay, okay. We'll pay... Well, now that we story should... on Recode says, We'll pay Taylor Swift, but I presume he means we'll pay everybody. It's funny, yeah. they kept saying artists in the discussion as though artists were the... Because these these deals, it wasn't that Apple wasn't going to pay us. They'd come to deals with record labels saying that they wouldn't be paying for the first three months. And while the discussion was focused on artists, you've got to imagine they're not paying artists. And in large portion, they are paying record labels and the artists will get whatever their deals state. They'll yeah, see, get that's what pisses me off because really, yeah. Taylor, you know better than that. It's your freaking label. That's well, it does. It does. It. it does trickle but, down to the I mean, it yeah. does, you know, the not getting paid. The, the, yeah, but the who made that deal? Paid. The labels, the labels yeah. their yeah, her absolutely. label made that deal. Well, and 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 the and this is not a minor offer from Apple. We want to make sure people get yes. what the numbers. How much could is that going to be? Do we know? If if well, I can if if the by my calculation, and I'm you know I, I what I'm looking at is Apple said they're trying to hit a hundred million. Let's just say they they do. You know they're gonna put they're gonna do a big push for that first three months, and they actually get a hundred million people, and they actually you know don't pay ten dollars a month. And they actually would have paid seventy percent. That's like over two billion dollars. That's a big chunk of what they paid for Beats. Yeah, but hundred so million is ridiculously optimistic. You think that? It's that's ridiculous. Also, also, they're not paying the full rate for the like. They're going to pay what they call streaming prices for before you subscribe. When you subscribe, revenue share kicks in, but the free listeners are going to get what they call a streaming fee, and nobody seems to know what that means. But it could be in the tens, if not high tens, if not maybe triple. Well, here's of the dollars. deal: we know that uh, Spotify says they've paid three billion total over the entire life of Spotify to the labels. Uh, Tim Westergren at Pandora, what did he say? One billion dollars last year. Uh, those are both, I mean, uh, but, and, that's and, 75 million uh, street, lot, uh, free streamers on Spotify. That's 100 million streamers on Pandora. So I, it's, it's a billion. Let's say it's a billion. 
Well, and, and, and the thing is, is that Not now, most. if the if the record companies are smart, they are going to promote the heck out of. And, and this is why this uh, my uh, conspiracy theory hat goes on, is that if the record after all this PR, if the record car companies are smart, they're going to push everybody to Apple Music because right. they're. It is there is no cost for the for the listener to jump in for three months and they get money out of it. Yeah. Like this is the, the, the record companies right now can print money from this now. So are you thinking that, that, that this get, was the get, plan all from, along? They, no, 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 no. It's, it's 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 like the the old saying, but the, the the executive who was responsible for New Coke asking, hey, is this just a PR campaign to promote Coke? And he said, we're not that smart. We're not that stupid either. I, I, I do believe that the, the speed at which this decision came in close to, at least close to the Taylor Swift post, I think that that does underscore that this whole question about are we going to pay out money for the first three months of, uh, of users, that inside of Apple, that was, I believe that that was a very, very hotly argued topic, that it wasn't uh, a, a decision that was made on universal contentions, uh, consensus, and that at the, I believe that at the at the end, that decision was made, said, look, we got to make this decision, let's just go this way, and whatever, whatever happens, happens. I do think that even after the announcement was made, it could have tipped one way or another, and I believe that Apple deciding that given that there were pros and cons of each way, there are advocates at the top uh, for e either direction. They said that if we ca if we cave in right now, when we have this incredibly critical launch in less than a week from now, this will not be the discussion about wh whether or not we're screwing over independent artists. It will be a discussion about Apple Music. And that's what I think happened. Yeah, it's and good. Again, it's good for Apple Music. I mean, it's a costly, but it's, it's a good, potentially well, costly. Yeah, you know, they've already spent a lot of money on Beats. They're already spending a lot of money down right. the path. They can afford to do this. This is right. the, and and here's the thing: is that if the music industry figures out that they can just cash in on this, and if the artists all push it, and and ev everyone pushes it, Apple could end up paying out more money in the first three months than Spotify paid its entire history, True. and that that is a PR bundle for Apple that that is worth the money Probably they're is. spending on that. Yeah, if 100 There's, million people um, sign yeah. up, that's good. They, they're, I, they're, they really do. They really are consistently trying to fight the idea that a free service is is, is a business that any real business is, is going to get into. It should be said though that Spotify does pay out their artists even uh, to uh, even on behalf of people who are using the free layer. The difference is that they're not getting. They're, they're essentially they get credit for uh, ad revenue that is sold to these free listeners, and that is added to the main pile of money that's coming in from uh, per play clicks. Uh, from the from the rest of the service, so it's uh, Apple was Apple was on thin ice here, and another part of the problem was that, and this is probably unfair, but this is the humanity is not fair. When the when the most widely quoted figures about Apple is how many cl how close to two hundred billion dollars in actual workable money that they have on hand, it's hard for them to that it becomes harder for them to explain. Here is why we don't feel like paying out money There's, for the three months worth of content that we're actually using. Uh, that's again, it's an emotional argument that people are making against Ac uh, Apple, but it can be an effective one. And it might be one that Apple said, if we write a check, this goes away. Let's just write the check and make to, it go away. Just to add to what Andy was saying, I heard the same thing that it was highly contentious, you know, at the top levels and that people were arguing about it even up to the last minute when yeah. Eddie was making his tweets and that but it's also important to understand this shows us several things apple music is incredibly important to apple as a company it's not just a product that they want to use to sell iphones you can witness that by seeing the android app is coming for it apple music is a big deal and people care about it at the very highest level of apple which is probably why you get the senior vice president of itunes sorry of internet services on twitter at you know that late at night on a sunday uh, but also it's it is a discussion. It's not like evil people versus good people. There are people who think that right. maybe if Apple throws their money at this, uh, and Apple really does believe down to their core that they need three months. They were willing to sacrifice a lot of things to get this three-month trial, but that if they just throw money at it, they might get a you know like, um, government oversight the way they got it with eBooks or the way they've they're already being looked at by states' attorneys general for music. There's sometimes when Apple feels that money alone can't solve a problem that. Whether you believe like, that the DOJ lawsuit over ebooks was was prompted or not, or whether you think that state's attorneys general should already be looking at Apple Music or not, they have that fear in them now that just that just money makes them a target for things. So it's it's not always a cut and dry. Just throw our money at it either. It's interesting. Taylor obviously would make a great diplomat because uh, even from the title of the post on right through it, it's all about I love you, Apple. You're great, you're ingenious, you're innovators, you push the right boundaries. It's just this one little thing 
<laughs> so it was, I, I almost feel like she kind of knew she'd win this battle, and she certainly knew that Apple would still be an important part of her music strategy. She also says something very strange. She says at the end, we don't ask for free iPhones. Please don't ask us to provide you with our music. I'm pretty sure Taylor Smith, Swift has never paid for an iPhone. And in fact, maybe she doesn't have to ask, but every well, artist I've, in the industry gets free iPhones. Give me a break. Well, I, I think the label sends it to her, then they charge they charge it four times <laughs> charge as much it back. against her account. But it's about uh, the well, labels are the bad guys here, and I think this whole discussion uh, really bypasses the real problem here, which is the record labels. And I, the only guy at Apple who feels bad about this at this point is the guy who spent eight months of his life negotiating this deal with the record labels, only to see it thrown out the window the minute. You know, Taylor there was Swift an accountant at Apple who was going, we're really going to pay for all the iTunes stuff for three months for free on this as well. I've got a server I've got to make. I mean, don't you think yeah. Apple worked well, also, hard to get to the, they're paying 71.5% instead of 70% to the record labels. Uh, that was part of the deal. And what we'd like to have this free for three months. Don't you think that was a big negotiation they had with the labels? Yeah. And Jiminy, what is that? There's a the, the lightning storm is right over top of my head right I'm now. I'm scared. So, oh my god! Was, I'm, was, I'm gonna, I was about to jump out of the table. Alex is going to turn to the flash right in front of us. The lightning <laughs> bolt is is it was it was instantaneous to the sound, which means that it must be right here. Yeah. There's flash flood warnings. You start but I'm on one the Mississippi. Floor, so. Yeah. Oh. As long as the server doesn't get. There we go. Here comes another one. Are you in Pittsburgh? Where are you? I am. I'm in Pittsburgh. Yeah, we had a lot of rain here, unlike California. Did you uh, sacrifice to the thunder god lately? I, would. I have not. I think I probably should. I have. think you might. Uh, yeah, it's it's a little. It's a little so it's people nice are saying Taylor Swift has her own label. She has her own imprint under a real label, right? Yeah, I mean, you look at you, you, but you look at this letter, and it's it's uh, well, the difficulty of any any of us trying to discuss this is that we don't know exactly what's going on behind the scenes. Right. We don't know what the legal repercussions they have or any any of the stuff that they signed is. Um, but uh, the the thing that occurred to me reading this is that there was no matter what was going on, there was absolutely no downside to Taylor Swift's or tra Taylor Swift's people posting this, where either this would affect actual change in which, hey, look how great how great and respected Taylor Swift's word is, or nothing would happen in which she is seen uh, sticking up for, for uh, independent musicians. Either way, this is it's good stuff for her to do. And in terms of self-interest, there's certainly going to be a larger self-interest of, of a kind, but... Uh, Listen to what... Think, uh, you, you, can't, you can't think that this was a problem that she needed to solve for herself by... by no, and that it. she says that, and that, yeah, she's obviously doing fine. Yeah. Uh, Tom Conrad, who's the CTO at Pandora, had a series of eight tweets. Uh, he's pretty angry. Spotify, he starts Spotify, YouTube, Pandora, and all others pay artists for their free tiers and trials. It's the right thing to do. Swift took her new album off Spotify, not because she's not paid, but because she feels their free service, quote, devalues music. Swift never pulled from YouTube, which is the most popular free service, and certainly devalues music if Spotify does. Swift's career was built in terrestrial radio play, which is a free service. And and people don't necessarily understand this. I know you do, Alex. Doesn't pay recording artists. They only pay the publishing rights. They The ASCAP BMI fees go to the songwriter or whoever owns the copyright. Apple isn't getting rid of its long free trial and is now going to, but is now going to pay artists. This simply puts it at parity with everyone else. Reminder, Apple uses music to make billions off hardware. Artists... See nothing from this. Swift's letter, and this is the important part, and Apple's response is mostly theater. Nothing here to suggest that Apple treats artists more fairly than anyone else. My point is this. There's too much animus between artists and Silicon Valley. We shouldn't herald this move as progress. It's status quo. And my point is the artists should embrace Silicon Valley and get rid of the labels because that's the predator here, not yeah. Apple. Humans are funny. Right. Like one of the things I noticed is that everyone on Twitter, at least when I was following it, was saying that either the artist should suck it up or that Apple should pay. And almost no one said, hey, why can't we start paying for the music immediately if we want to? Why can't we pay for this? There stuff? you go. Because nobody wants to pay for content anymore. They always want someone else to pay for them. <laughs> That's a really Apple's good point. a great target. The recording artists are a great target. It happens with apps. It happens with websites. It happens like we, we, we go through this <laughs> okay. with podcasts. That's a very excellent Can point. I can, can I just can I just make a point? I, I I do think that there's a lot of sense in what you say. I also think there's a lot of sense in comparing it to you're 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 going out to to eat with three friends of yours. One of these friends makes 1.8 billion dollars a year. The rest of you are doing okay. He wants to stiff the waitress for a tip. 
And, and he tells the rest of the table, well, look, if you want to tip them 40% to make up for what I'm not going to kick in, why don't you go ahead and no, do no, that? I, I understand all that. And I think that app, like this move from Apple's part is absolutely, they, they, they could not buy this. It would be, it, the best way to put it for me is that this is a huge investment for Apple. Paying off artists has so many returns to them that it should be a no-brainer. But I'm also, I'm continuously surprised, and I and it's you hear it every day, developers talking about how they can't make sustainable businesses on anybody's app store. Amazon was toying with subscription app services as part of Prime. You have this race to the bottom where you want these streaming services. But I don't know if, if Apple pays the artists or not, if 100 million people sign up or not, I still don't know if it's going to be sustainable. I don't know if content blockers are going to hurt websites. I don't know if podcasts are going to make enough... All of this goes back to, as individuals, we don't want to pay for this stuff anymore, but we still want to produce it at a very high level. And I think all of us are struggling to find those models. But I think I think a lot of people, I think a lot of people are, are willing to pay their ten bucks a month. In fact, you know, for me, the family edition is going to drop my cost in streaming. You know, so fourteen ninety nine for six people is going to be a lot less than if, I'm paying if, now. If Spotify, which they said they will, does the same thing, would that change your tune, or are you going to Beats no matter what? No, I'm I'm leaving Spotify, and the number one reason I'm leaving Spotify is because every time I turn on my phone, I have to go into settings and turn off social. You know, so like I don't want to share with anyone what I'm playing because I don't want to admit how yeah. often I listen to Katy Perry or Taylor yeah. Swift or anything else. And I'm so, proud of that. I, I liked it. You listened like to, to Katy Perry that. and you liked it. My recommendation that today is is one that I think will save a lot of people a lot of money, and I know it has for me, and that is the Staples app. Now, you know, I'll, wait a minute. That wondering. was easy. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> the Staples app. Cut so, ching. So here, here is why. Yeah, yeah. The Staples app is free. But more importantly, it has a feature in it that is very important if you ever have if you have a staples nearby. Um, so let me let me show you. So you see, uh, if I if we look at this here, you see you've got all these little these little things here. And the thing that you're going to notice is you'll be really surprised to see that this is fifteen ninety nine. Ah. Now that may now that may be something that is a little bit kind of abrupt because you're used to seeing this be eighty two dollars. Uh huh. In Staples. Oh, show off. Okay. Al Alex, so, Alex, what's, what, Alex, what's so, the weather going to be closer to the coast? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, no, no, I don't have the green screen yet. That's coming. That's where we're going to be right Alex, back was that here. a flea I'll flicker, or were they doing the nickel offense there? I love how yeah, yeah, casually yeah. he did yeah, that. So, That's humble tech. Humble tech. So, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So the thing is, is that what you're going to see here is you're going to have these X's and O's. And this guy, That this, looks this good. Price, That's the best looking telestrator I've ever seen. Forget the Staples thing. Took a lot that, of work. Alex Lindsay, as he travels about from time to time, stops by. We're so glad that you're here. It was great to be here, yeah. even if I made a fool of myself over Spotify. <laughs> uh, did you? I don't think you did. I missed that part. I think I did. So here's the thing. I think that what happened is it used to be that it would still share inside of Spotify, and I just got into the habit of it. So the whole, the whole thing with they Spotify. They listened to you. you they actually... fixed it, and you ignored them. And Alex, then I ignored them and complained about it online. You got a faster online, reaction so than Taylor just... Swift. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Alex, you, 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 didn't, you didn't make yourself look foolish. You would be making yourself look foolish if you were to give yourself a bright red Groucho mustache and eye, and and uh, and must and, and and eyebrows. Oh, that he oh, would. Wait, how would you do such a thing? You couldn't do I'm that. That's go, not I, possible. I would go like this, and I'd go. Mm. Mm, zoom in. Oh, oh my uh, God, what is he doing? Oh He's God, horrible. I don't know. I got a I can't cut away from this. This is too good. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was fun. That was awesome. That was a little a Shepherd Fairy moment there. That was amazing. Very talented. <laughs> Uh, one of the other interesting bits of news that came out uh, on July 1st, Johnny Ive assumed his role of chief design officer at Apple in the updated <laughs> Apple.com. <laughs> <laughs> it's he, fun to basically, say. Basically, uh, after everything I look about this, I I see him just like putting his his stove his his his, his, his like uh, stovetop uh, hat, just uh, his uh, his pan on the top of his head, slinging a bag of apple seeds, and just walking barefoot across the entire world, spreading spreading design. It was a really majestic sort of description of someone who doesn't has certainly has a lot to do, but they're not really explaining what it is he's going to have to be doing. I, I thought it was great because they just they made a very subtle update to Apple.com, but they also added bios for the two people who are basically replacing him as day-to-day -day managers of Apple, the new vice president. And that's Alan Dye, who's taking over Human Interface, the HI group, and Richard Howarth, who's taking over Industrial Design, the ID group. But it, it caused a bit of a kerfuffle because on the internet, it says that they are on Apple.com. It says that they're reporting to Tim Cook and not Johnny Ive. Uh, and a couple of things sort of stood out at me there. One is that all the vice presidents 
evidence listed on Apple.com report to Tim Cook, uh, Ken Ferry on Twitter pointed out that uh, no, Steve Jobs only had one direct report, and that was Steve Wozniak. And Steve Wozniak had no direct reports, and everyone else went technically to Tim Cook. Uh, mm. And Apple, strategy, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but Apple, it just doesn't see org charts the way other companies do, I think. And it's dangerous to sort of read into what they put on Apple.com. Absolutely. Um, Apple.com, I mean, come on. Apple.com is designed to showcase for the shareholders, and it's designed to showcase for the, the, the media. Basically, it's not really designed to sh like if Apple really wanted to roll out a here's how our management structure works and here are lines and here they could, but they're not going to their uh, their management structure, I feel like is just as much a not necessarily a trade secret, but is part of what makes Apple Apple. It's part of how they build their company. And just because you have, oh, they report directly to Tim Cook, that means Johnny Ive is thinking about retiring. No, it means they're vice presidents. Ever, all the VPs talk to, to Tim Cook. That's how it works. They're VPs. Johnny, Johnny Saruji, who runs Chipsets, doesn't report to Dan Riccio. He reports to uh, Tim Cook. It's, it, it is interesting, but I think it's hard to make a case. Whether, whatever you feel about Johnny, whether you feel this is him starting to retire or him going in a different direction and maybe assuming more responsibility, whether you think this is some elaborate plan to hide his salary from Wall Street or you think it's just a way to make him content and happy to continue his job, uh, I, I think Apple.com, uh, you work there, Ashley. I think Apple.com is never a good way to assess any of this stuff. No, absolutely. I think Serenity hit it right on the head in terms of, you know, it's for shareholders. It's for media. It's to sort of placate uh, the people responsible for our stock price and 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 make sure, well, their stock price and, and make sure that there's no panic. Um, I do think it is interesting though, that they're reporting to, to Tim, but I feel like that's an organizational thing. Like maybe Tim writes their performance reviews at the end of the year or something. If we're <laughs> if we're under the auspicion that we're under the auspicion that Johnny uh, is sort of accepting a, or taking on a little bit less responsibility or a, a little bit less of the management responsibility, as was in one of those articles recently, then I think it makes perfect sense that he wouldn't uh, they they would sort of wouldn't directly report to him in, in a managerial structure. The Apple Car. Rumor persists. Christ. <laughs> is it is it a waste of time to even talk about this? No, I mean it's it's what they're working. It's the same thing about talking about the watch for four years ago, right? I mean, it's it's a product that they're exploring, and they got a lot of people working on it, and we have no idea what it's going to ultimately end up looking like. Yet. Wall Street Journal says that they've just hired a auto industry veteran from Fiat, Doug Betts. He led global global quality at Fiat, but you know what? Well, A, that's not a really good recommendation. But B, uh, it may not be cars. He could just be, you know, he's an expert in, in global quality. In manufacturing, yeah. yeah. In manufacturing. And assuring it. Could be QC yeah. on computers. Does that be cars? But the, but the interesting thing when you notice is that they're not getting a lot of people who are on their way up in the auto industry. They're getting people to leave really great jobs to right. take wow. jobs at Apple. Uh, and so that that would at least indicate that this isn't something that well you know we try we we try a whole bunch of things we have a we tried a square iPad and we've tried a Mac with a touch screen this is you, you it's hard to get someone to leave a really great career uh, if on something that Apple is just sort of thinking about so uh, it it leaves me with the impression that Apple really really does intend to actually put something on the road uh, but uh, whether they can actually uh, pull it off remains to be seen. Uh, it, did, it did make me think, though, that this is one product that's maybe kind of perfect for Apple in that they don't have to build a Toyota. They don't they really they, if they sell uh, 10,000, 20,000 of these, uh, that can amount to a success. And it is something that they can uh, target people who are specifically looking for something that is elegant, that is well designed, that has a certain luxury phony baloney cachet about it if they want to take advantage of that as well. Uh, Tesla did brilliant stuff because they couldn't, they, uh, in the early days, of course, they couldn't build a, a twenty or $30,000 car. They, even, they couldn't even build a car that would meet the conventional definition of an automobile given range. But what they could do is if they built it in a, in a luxury frame and they made it something that is hard to obtain and very exclusive and something that would only appeal to people who are very much interested in whatever the next wave is, they got all those people to pay eighty to $110,000 for the car that then allowed them to then build the thirty or $40,000 car a few years later. So this it, it's it, even better than the watch, it, it, it seems. This could be like a perfect Apple product. Interesting. Webster in our chat room points out that 
Fiat owns Ferrari, and Eddie Q is on the Ferrari board. Hmm. It's Kevin Bacon there somewhere. The, oh, well, but those things can be <laughs> problematic, too, because if you're on a board and you poach a, uh, an employee from well, that Tim company, Cook was on the Nike board, and they still got watches. Yeah. yeah. So, but the interesting thing to me here is not you, like, I, you're I, not going to let make... Apple executives on your board if all they do is use it to do it. To, to, I mean, to, to totally search Eric for... Schmidt's move. I mean, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you, could, you could argue it as Eric Schmidt. Uh, yeah, but the thing that's interesting to me about this is that Apple can make a beautiful car. Like Apple is just a great industrial design company, and they can hire a lot of people to make a beautiful car. But the thing that interests me about Apple is that they're not just a manufacturer. They do integrated products from the chipset on up. And th th I think like things like the software story and the services story are going to be – you you barely think about software on cars. Maybe you look at the big Tesla screen and you wonder why you have Daring Fireball at, at 17 inches on your dashboard. But uh, I think there's a real – or I think maybe Apple thinks is a real opportunity to to solve cars from an interface – perspective. And you often heard Steve Jobs' this time, you know, cracking the interface for the TV and, and various products like that. And the Apple Watch is beautiful, but it's ultimately the software on that that we experience. And I think uh, just based on rough rumors of who's working on this kind of stuff, they have a lot of really, really smart people beyond the atoms and, and on the bits on these projects. And to kind of sort of get an idea of what Apple thinks a car should be running, not necessarily how it runs, but what software it runs on that, I think that's going to be an extremely interesting thing to see. <laughs> you tried talking about that uh, Ars Technica, I think it was an uh, article that was, who wrote it? I think it was Ars, but I can't remember, that said that you can jam this stylus <laughs> back in, and you can. It goes in very, this is backwards. Yeah. Yeah, Phil in. Nickinson from Android Central did a, like a couple days ago. He told people not to do Central. this, but yeah. they didn't. Yeah, they didn't. But Samsung okay. issued a statement now, which is amazing. What they telling say? people they, they should read the manual. <laughs> you're holding you're, you're, it wrong. You're, you're inserting it wrong. We highly recommend our Galaxy Note 5 users follow the instructions in the user's guide to ensure they do not experience such an unexpected scenario caused by reinserting the S Pin in the other way around. Yeah. <laughs> you're inserting it wrong. Wow. Yes. And, so and what but, happens is but the truth is it's very easy to do that. Oh, I just did it. Oh crap. <laughs> Leo. And that's their official stance is RTFM. <laughs> <laughs> It's not, Leo, it, it, it doesn't are you, are you, are you serious, Leo? Did you just do Can't it? Can't withdraw the stylus? <laughs> it, 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 I thought, because it went in so easily, I thought, oh, this isn't going to be a problem to get it oh out. Oh, my God. <laughs> the, the clippers closed down on it, apparently. Uh, they did. Yeah. <laughs> and now you're not supposed to rip it out. You're supposed to gently... <laughs> yes. No, no, I can do that. Don't get those pliers anywhere near it. <laughs> uh, oh, my I God. I can't up, believe you know, I just did that. You inserted just get a hammer wrong. and push it in the whole rest of the way. <laughs> No, I haven't damaged the thing yet. The The damage occurs, because it's still loosely in there. The damage occurs when you... So something closed on it, Renee? Yeah, apparently there's some yeah. sort of gripper inside. At least that's from the stories oh, that I've heard. There is. I feel like it's gripped it. Yeah, the, and the, and the problem like is that if you, if, you, if you pull it out in an injudicious fashion that way, then it, will, it won't break the phone. It will just damage the sensor that the thing uses to de detect whether this the stylus is inside the holder or not so that you you lose that you will lose that cool feature oh, where as soon as you gosh. dislodge it you, you pull it out it's ready to take don't come at me with tools please i i think this what if, if, what anything, if, you, what if, you, what if you paint it with like black rubber and you tell people it's an it's a cellular antenna <laughs> yeah there you go. just hold the phone upside down it'll look like an I just antenna did that. it's the that galaxy is, that is it'll so be the galaxy stupid. og right I thought, the galaxy og with the og the, giant the old school I yeah. thought that it would be harder to do. I, I thought I, did, I should have read that uh, it's the manual. Yeah. Uh, I thought that, oh, at some point it will give me some resistance, then I'll push on it, and that's when I'll be in trouble. But in fact, it just loosely slid in, and then oh, I man. tried to retract it. That it, illustrates a lot, though. So it right? is a problem. Yeah. You know what? It is a Samsung problem. Samsung claiming that read the manual, otherwise, you know, this is going to happen to you. Like, if there's no resistance whatsoever, it just seems like it would be very easy to make that mistake. Yeah, because you're not even looking. Well, yeah. Gosh darn it. But Leo, it's going to be okay, right? Because you can take it to the Genius Bar. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. the, the Smarty Pants Bar. Smarty Pants Bar. Yeah. Son this of is a... why I'm, 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 I'm always pleased when, like, Samsung seems to be learning stuff. Like with the Galaxy <laughs> S6, it's the nicest phone they've made in a while. But it's like, I wish that you would... There's somebody you need to hire or fire at that company that says, well... That you know, was really too easy. It's, that's 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 the sort of thing that a, a higher life form would not design right. a phone that way. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, somebody just like, didn't test it first. Put a Twizzler in, see what happens. Somebody <laughs> didn't really think about it. So what's happened is the top has is is now trapped inside a um, yeah. some sort, and it's it's still you can see it's still loose. In fact, every time I do this, uh, the it's buzzer like goes off that I've I've removed the pen. 
So it's yeah, it's it's, like it's a, on the sensor there. It's like um, a hook or something. Oh my gosh. I'm sure I'm, I'm sure that if you've got a, the, uh, an appropriate spudger, you could easily you could you could slide it out. Yeah, I need a spudger. It, so I the, definitely... so I was poo pooing this story because I thought, well, well, you'd have to be a <laughs> you'd have to be a moron <laughs> to stick this in the wrong way. Yeah, apparently <laughs> so. Hey, zing. Sorry. <laughs> apparently, the joke, the, the, the joke was right there. I had to do it. <laughs> You're not a moron. This is a badly designed product. Apparently, you don't. I was, I because I love this. I love this phone, but boy, I guess I won't be using it much anymore. Um, I guess I could pull it out. I could pull it out really hard, but it will just it will break the sensor. Yeah. Uh, and sure I don't think the sensor is not super important, I but it's could, kind I of important. Really like hard. you want the sensor because that's the thing that, for instance, lets you draw that's on it when the phone's off. And so, you knew what you were doing, Leo, and you got stuck. I mean, imagine just someone what? not paying attention. What if you like un like sort of like unscrew it as you take it out? If you rotate no, 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 it, does no, no, that no, no, make no, it no, less no, bad? Is there is there a it's like an arrow wound right now? Where's Kelly? the manual? There's no manual. <laughs> this didn't come with a manual. There's like it this must booklet. Have. Samsung said to read it. You don't you don't have to fix it right now, Leo. Wait, <laughs> get, get 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 one good drink in you. Get nice this and mellow great. and relaxed. This is great. What I need to do is get but, maybe some KY jelly or something and. Just also, show title. <laughs> <laughs> I think the I title. I can't believe I did that. I even knew. You knew, but I didn't. Yeah. But I didn't know. No, but I but, thought right. that it will be harder. Mm -hmm. That was very also, loosely going in. There was nothing. <laughs> okay, I thought okay. it would be harder. All I need is some KY jelly. Uh, I put it. I inserted it wrong. Yeah, that. you inserted it wrong. That's of our the title. Sir, right now, I'm sorry. It's just <laughs> oh, this is so. <laughs> So 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 Renee, are you just are you just like with your free hand like writing an I more calm about this as we're <laughs> No, this is Phil Nickinson's problem. Some... Android Central. I, I, I this, they have to deal with this. I can't I'll just I'm, say, I'm actually actively sad because I like this phone a lot. I know, right? I know. And it's a stupid it's And a stupid, by the way, it cost were... me almost nine hundred dollars. But can you yeah. imagine Apple if they made the Apple Watch and you slid one of the, the buckles in wrong if it just got stuck halfway there and you could never get it out again? Like they've got to just gotta just test these things. Like how does this go past yeah, I mean, by QA? That 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 is, I mean that is a good comparison because you know the styluses on the iPhone are oh wait a minute they don't make any <laughs> they eliminated the problem Andy they didn't oh, stop the problem wait. at the end of the cycle they stopped they the just problem stopped at the beginning typical, of the chain typical. I guess but I, I, I guess what I should do now is figure out how to take the whole thing apart yeah because I haven't I damaged it, anything yet the I fixed still it posted work. a uh, is there a fix uh, I don't know I don't know is maybe I fix but it has a, a later down. tonight on all on all about Android. <laughs> Leo performing we'll surgery. We'll use your phone as a cautionary tale. Tonight. I am like so a, bummed out. Oh, I'm so sorry, Leo. <laughs> is it within 14 days? Can you just exchange it? It is. Oh, hey. There you go. <laughs> I just bring it back to AT&T well, and say, I got a problem. Hey, it's within the 14-day <laughs> window. Yeah, seriously. I, all right, I'm going to the AT&T yeah, store. I would, I would definitely I'm do saying, that dude, first recourse. Yeah. Dude, I can't, um, uh, what happened? You can't style this. And he'll say, oh, yeah, we heard about that on Android Central. Uh, you put it in wrong. Did you read the manual, sir? <laughs> what manual? I have to bring this to AT&T after the show. Yeah. And you've got to wait in line with all the other Son stylus of people. A, uh, we'll all be standing there like this with a <laughs> stylus coming out of... It's you could use not, one of uh, those to work on, to write on another Galaxy Note. That's the brilliant plan. You end up with a really oh. big stylus. And <laughs> Plus stylus. Does this count as intentional, like damage, like I broke, like I broke it? No, this no. is accidental. Unless they're friends. watching YouTube, you're right. This should not happen. I, we, the three of us, are willing to swear you were taking great care of that stylus. I, I didn't. I, I just was putting it. I. Not this is not your fault. There, <laughs> there are people to blame for that. None of them are at this table, Leo. Just tell them that. Tell them the antenna is falling out. And you, and you <laughs> That's good. It. Uh, Kelly, them, you got it. Uh, I, you know, the antenna is falling out. I, I don't know, and I, it doesn't seem to stay in when it I put it in. It was a million to one shot, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> You're the ass man. <laughs> yes, this is the answer. We have a good, we have a good plan for you, Lee. I wonder. Okay, I'll report back uh, whether. No, don't come at me with tools. I'm telling you, it's going to AT and T. <laughs> unless you're willing to take, unless you're willing to Twitter's take this to, to AT and T, it's staying right there, and I'm not touching it with no iFixit spudger kit. It doesn't. Uh, Twitter, it, seriously, Jason, this is not. 
Oh, Twitter's trying to figure out a hashtag toolkit. for you, Leo. And right now they're settling on Pengazi. That seems to be those. Yes. <laughs> Pengazi. Pengazi. After Stylus Gate, Pengate, and now it's on Pengazi. <laughs> and Brad Mullen has admitted defeat with Pengazi. What do you mean? Wipe it with a cloth? Uh, holy cow. Mankind is born to trouble just as surely as a sparks <laughs> play upward. Yeah. Why, why isn't this class action? Like, yeah, for what, real. What Somebody just asked that in the chat. Well, does it happen to a lot of people? I don't know. It will well, the now. iPod battery was a the iPod battery was a class action thing because I got a new iPod out of it. Well, Apple's doing a um, Apple bringing back phones that have a camera problem. So hopefully Samsung right. will just bring yeah. back phones that have a stuck style or I, know, I guess all Better. of them have the stuck no, style. Burke, problem. don't look at this and say I can fix it. You can't. I'm so uh, come here, come here, come here. No. Burke is Burke is our repair guy. He can fix anything. But you see how loose it is, yeah. and then when it comes right there, it's there's something. It's yeah. No, no, I'm taking an AT&T. I don't want to. Yeah. He's going to the guy, take the AT&T guy says, well, it looks like you slid something in there, sir. And I, I'd venture to guess that you aren't the only person that's going to be taking uh, the Note 5 back for this yes. very reason. I swear to God, I thought this story was link bait, was spurious. <laughs> Come on, who's going to put it in backwards? You'd have to force it, and then, of course, it would be stuck. No, it slides in really. I mean, there's no yeah. resistance until there is when you're trying to remove it. Yeah, design team should have caught this in some way. They should have built in some sort of mechanism that prevents it from sliding in backwards, especially if it can... results in such an easy locking <laughs> in this way. It like, would have been easy, that's a, that's easy a design thing issue. Because well, the, they make the... sure you can't do it twice, Jason. I mean, Whomever can great. withdraw <laughs> this pen shall <laughs> then fall be CEO of Samsung. <laughs> <laughs> By divine providence. <laughs> <laughs> but he is but a lowly stable boy. Surely he Best cannot be the noble one. Ever. Was, uh, Leah, was the Note 5 your pick for today? Call me Ward. <laughs> I'm supposed to review it for I before know, you right. buy. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a well, you, hell of a review well, now, ain't it? <laughs> there's Got a, a review. Great review. Yep. Wait, wait, okay, if AT&T will not exchange it, um, then, Burke, I will give you an opportunity to attempt to work your wily ways upon it. I, I like somebody in the chat room said, uh, put a straw, although, I mean, there's a little air gap. You could put a little straw around that if you found something small enough. Oh, uh, and, and then sh as a sheath. Can I, but mm, can, I, can I tell that's you? That's not that a bad this? idea. Jason, why do you keep coming at me with crap? <laughs> you know, when I, when I, when I broke my uh, iPhone 5 in the I first week, it was also, I, I hated that I broke it, but it was also an opportunity to say, okay, let's see how good customer service yeah. is. No, I always. So, uh, this, yeah. is a, this is a great opportunity for you to bring it in, explain what happened honestly, and then to see if AT&T slash Samsung decides to be awesome. Yeah. Well, or at least acknowledge that, okay, yeah, we kind of, we could you have know, done they, they Phil did it to his review unit. <laughs> I did it to the phone that I spent 850 bucks on from AT&T. And extend my contract for two years. Oh, we had a bunch of people in the forum. We had a bunch of people in the forums who had it done. That's how we found out about it. They just oh. so it's not, a, they it's not unusual. Attention. No, they weren't paying attention. Yeah, this would be this easy to like do. You said it felt like it worked. So. Yeah, it would be easy to do. Yeah. Jim in the chat room has a good idea, which is pull the stylus out and let it be broken. Yeah, and then go to AT and T and just say it's not recognizing the I'll stylus wait till they removal refuse, anymore. I'll wait till they refuse me for this one. I guarantee yeah. you, when I go to the AT&T, they know me at the AT&T store. I spent, some, <laughs> I spent a little bit of time there. They're watching us now. <laughs> They're probably watching now. Uh, that was true. When I dunked my iPhone in the water <laughs> and brought it to the Apple store up here in Santa Rosa, um, I I was, I'm glad, too. I was honest. I said, yeah, I, you know, I, I, I dunked it in a glass of water. And he said, yeah, I know. I saw you do it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's good I was honest. Because I, if I'd said, oh, I don't know what happened, he would have said, come on, Leo. So. Oh, my gosh. This is a problem. This is not an insignificant problem. I now acknowledge this is not link bait. This is, a, <laughs> this is not an insignificant problem. Uh, kind of a big issue. And guess what? It's pinkish. Joining me right now with his pink iPhone 6S Plus, Renee Ritchie from imore.com. So Ooh, pink, both of them. Yeah. You got the silver on the or what do they call it? Aluminum on the uh, little. Yeah, one? silver on the success and so much rose gold on the success yeah. plus. It really there's a lot of expanse on the back. It's like of that, that dress, Leo. It like every like it looks gold, then it looks white, then it looks pink. It's going to be controversy. Yeah, I really want. I'm here to tell you. Uh, while if you look at it straight on, and that's why all the pictures look pink. It is pink. But tilt it just a little bit, it gets coppery, and then a little more, and it turns gold. It's actually, I sound like I'm rationalizing. It's, 
It's actually very manly. Like a party on a phone. Andy, Andy Naco is also here from the Chicago Sun-Times. Hi, Andy. Hello, Leo. And I, I, I hope that, see, I, I was actually looking forward to having like a rose gold phone and somebody, people in the press have been ruining it by saying that, oh, no, there's a trend for men to get pink iPhones. <laughs> we should, they're calling it bros gold. Like, oh, no, nobody's calling it gold? that. You're, you're, gold. you're stupid. You're, tr you're trying to get a, take an a individual's personal preference and elevate it into a lifestyle trend. Stop doing that. Rose gold. Go, go get a cookie. Get your blood sugar back up. You will stop coming up with ideas like trying press to put the word press delete. bro in front of things. That's yeah. depressing. Rose gold. So uh, as you pointed out before the show began, and I'm, I'm now scanning through it because I didn't know it had come out, uh, Anand Tech, Joshua Ho, has put out, and they, they usually really focus on benchmarks and numbers, kind of getting down and dirty on it. They've put out their preliminary results on the new uh, iPhone. Um, Renee, you're going to have to summarize for me. So, I mean, in the proud tradition of Anand and Brian Klug, they're just getting deep into the silicon here. And By the way, we should mention that both Anand and Brian Klug now work for Apple. Yes, but Anantech <laughs> has been bought by uh, Perch. So they're the same company as Laptop Mag and oh. Tom's Guide and Tom's Hardware. And they have a, a, a strong uh, kind of roadmap about what, what differentiates them. And it's the numbers, it's the geeks, it's the benchmarks, it's the deep dive. So they're yeah, going they to they're gonna continue and, that, which is great. Yeah, and, and yeah. Josh is he's enormously intelligent. I Good. think he's about 12 years old. And I don't mean that. It's, I mean, like, no, he, he's a kid. Yeah. yeah, it is crazy how smart okay. he is. So. And Nan started it when he was in high school. I interviewed him right. when he was 16. It's a tradition. It's amazing. It's, and they, it's they're getting amazing. into the, the technology, like you were, we were talking about, is dual source. It means they're getting parts from TSMC, I think I'm getting the right order, and Samsung. And that's really hard because they're on different processes and you want similar results. But last year we saw like the iPhones shipped with the A8 processor and the iPhone iPad Air 2 did, but the iPad Air, uh, iPad Mini didn't. There just weren't enough processors. And this year, they are set, they're shipping tens of millions of phones, and they don't want to run out. And dual sourcing it is super smart. But it's the details in there, like what they're doing with the NAND flash storage in order to get this. It's like some similar to what they were doing with the MacBook storage. And when the difference between those devices starts to disappear, the, the idea of how powerful and how performant you can make a mobile device gets really, really interesting. They always, like, I didn't know this, but Anand says they'd always uh, written their own or designed their own custom controllers for the yeah. uh, SSD, the storage in the phone. Uh, and then this controller looks a lot like the MacBook SSD controller. Apple's always really focused on speed and SSD on the, on the uh, computer side. It does make a difference, though. Um, well, on in this phone. one, they're using TL, so they're using different kinds of RAM. I don't know if it's the same for the S models yet, but for the six and six plus, they were using MLC multi-layer for the mm -hmm. lower storage devices and TLC twin layer. And TLC is cheaper, NAND, but they're doing a lot to sort of mitigate this or, or make it just as fast for normal operations, even though it, it isn't traditionally as speedily as, as speedy a technology. Uh, but I have to say this phone is a beast. And boy, if you look at yeah. the uh, the NAND read and write benchmarks, it is so far beyond, the 6S Plus is so far beyond anything we've seen before. Twice, almost twice the speed of the Galaxy S6 and S6 Edge. It's what you it's what you get when you have like the kind of money Apple does, but you're also writing for a specific operating system and platform. For example, when Qualcomm makes a chip, it might get sold for a Windows phone and for an Android phone. So it's got to support OpenGL, but right. it's got to support DirectX, and you're carrying sort of that load whether you use it or not. And Apple can write specifically for what they want to do with the phone. Although that's for sequential reads. The random reads, actually, the S6 beats it. Yeah. Which I... <laughs> Who knows what? Although they're they're saying that might be a limitation of the test uh, ah, and not a limitation okay. of data, so they're going to look at it. Yeah, that um, seems a little deeply. odd to be on a sequential reads would do better on a spinning medium, but it shouldn't make yeah. much difference on a uh, on a random access medium like uh, uh, NAND chips. Uh, nevertheless, we're seeing a, a pretty speedy little device, and it's it's almost as fast on Chrome, Safari, and IE as the Surface Pro Three. <laughs> yeah, which is pretty good for a mobile device and you know just in my pure anecdotal experience I, it, it the iphone 6s plus feels extremely snappy i was actually crediting uh, some of that to the fact that it finally has two gigs of ram yeah it's also got a, it's, it's much faster it's got a 1.8 gigahertz uh now it's called a twister the apple a9 twister right. uh processor in it apparently the s6 also uses nvme so it's a similar nanotechnology which would explain why it's up there um, so this is one of the reasons why I'm looking forward to the iPad Pro so much. 
that's <laughs> it's it, it's an iOS device, but you, it, it you really it really shows you how much performance uh, a phone or a laptop leaves on the table when it's just has has to use off the shelf components. When you really do build everything to work together for this one application, you'd leave nothing on the table. Apple TV has arrived. Many of us have them. You, can you get it in Canada, or did you actually uh, bootleg it into the country, Renee? No, actually, I went to the Apple Store as soon as I landed, and they had like 300 of them lying down on the shelves. Uh, there's no, there's no very there's little no network short support. supply. Yeah, you can't get it anywhere near the content that you get in the U.S., but you can yeah. get the boxes. Um, yeah, I, in fact, uh, I got one and uh, played with it. In fact, we set it up, uh, showed Megan how to set hers up on iOS today, if you want to watch that. And I've done a kind of unboxing and a little bit of a review. Um, and I liked, and, and then Lisa said, well, how come we only have one? <laughs> <laughs> and why is it not in rose gold? Don't yeah. I get one in the gym? <laughs> and I said, okay, okay. So I ordered two more. So we, we're replacing the Apple TVs, basically. <laughs> I've, ordered, I've ordered five, Leo. I'm giving away his Christmas presents. They're, you know, uh, um, <laughs> they're good. They're, I don't know if they're $150 to $200 better than the old Apple TV. I, I was going to say, I don't know if they're, uh, th again, they're good, I'm not sure they're at the, I'm going to give it to somebody who is not necessarily particularly interested in this technology because we've all had some, some not great experiences that first, this first weekend, yeah. but we, we motor through them because we have perspective and we see all the benefits the that are coming future. Yeah. I'm not sure if, if like my aunt who just wants Netflix would want to so I figured this out. I, fi I figured this out. There's this big disparity, and, and if you're in the middle, you're screwed. But if you're on either end, you're fine. Like if you're a techie, you'll figure your way around it. Right. I I put one in for my mom yesterday, and all you had to we bumped her phone, and it was basically done. She downloaded Netflix. We put that in once, and she's super happy because she doesn't worry about any of the stuff that we worry right. about. Well, you're, still, you're still stuck with that remote, and bumping didn't work for me. I was so disappointed. That was like going to be the coolest thing ever, but bumping the phone didn't work. Didn't work for me That's either. Very well, sad. It worked after a while. So, uh, it, like half an hour, we actually had to stop down the show <laughs> and go. And then we went to manual and I said, no, I refuse to enter passwords that way. Like an animal. Like an animal. I'm a man. And we tried again. How does, there's, is there NFC in the thing? How does bumping No, work? you have to be close. No. Like it's, it's, it's Bluetooth, Bluetooth, but it really wants yeah. proximity. Yeah. Yeah, so I, you know, I held it and touched it and did everything. Well, and, how, can you get, how, can you, how can you get closer than physical contact? Yeah. <laughs> you you, you got like to apply yourself, policies? Andy. You got to want it. So, so are you telling me closeness. that Apple intentionally installed weak Bluetooth in there? No, the Bluetooth is fine because no, the, the controller is all use Bluetooth. I imagine it's an encryption too. thing. Oh, it's I an encryption it's, thing. Yeah, I don't know if that's official or if there's actually, you know, security reasons for it needing to be closer, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was so, just, you know. You don't want you don't want somebody to authenticate from two rooms away. Yeah, yeah. That would just be weird. Yeah. So take um, we we took three hours to set up. <laughs> so <laughs> my, my, take some my time. Like <laughs> it'll work eventually. That was, that was the best way to describe was... the Apple TV is that it it was way too long in coming, but the version we're getting is racing out the door. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they didn't have enough time for Bluetooth keyboard support. They didn't have enough time for it, it was the it's the selection of apps. I, the, my, uh, I've only I only got to play with it for three days before I had to leave for here. Uh, but I'm like I'm wow. I guess I'm so dumb. I can't figure out how to get into the app store because every time I click on this icon, I see this place that only has like three icon three apps <laughs> in each category. It's like I, it, I'm, I'm not even trying to be sarcastic here. It really is like the the, the Microsoft store uh, app store that if you're going to look for uh, modern apps that take advantage of Windows 10 and Windows 8, it's OK, let's get this. Let's see how many different word processors there are for. OK, there are two editors and they're both Markdown. That's disappointing. And so how about I do a search for photos? Not really. Okay, a search for podcasts? No really answers. And you're like, okay, it's day one. We'll keep the faith, brother. It'll uh... Two Twit apps, though. Two Twit apps, day three. one. Three. Yeah. Count them. Three, three. Oh, Twit three apps. Wow. Yeah, uh, all, all approved for launch day. You did uh, a nice... Up reproducing. You did a nice little video uh, at iMore of all of the apps available at launch. Uh, a lot of games... Yeah, because uh, yeah, if you didn't know their name, games. you couldn't even find them. You have to you have to search them based on name. The, the other day. the other really cool thing is I was surprised that uh, as soon as I set up, uh, it I, I I had a copy of Cannonball uh, for Apple TV. Because you'd already installed I, it on iOS. Well, 
Well, because, yeah, exactly. This whole thing where every game that I ever bought and played for about six weeks and then stopped playing is going to start to, like, like zombie, like, come back from the grave. Like, remember, I'm hot-ass fuzz racing. I have racing. mixed feelings about you that. You loved me it's, in 2009. <laughs> it's a universal purchase. It's not a universal app. It's a completely separate binary, but developers can choose to group them in a way that if you have the iOS app, you get the Apple TV app for free. And that's great for us, but I want a lot of really good games. Like, I want Adam Atomic to make another $10 for right. Cannibal because right. you put in, like, a bunch of new awesome characters and things, and I want to give them some new money. Uh, but then people now, when they, they don't see that purchased app, they just think the app doesn't exist. So, like, they didn't know That's that. a little confusing, was isn't it? Yeah. You'd probably prefer yeah. people see it than not know. Um, God, you did the, the, you did the only way to, to do this, which is to enter a single letter, because when you enter a letter, it shows you all the things with that letter, and, and you literally went through the alphabet. To Andy's point, there were not enough apps yet for them to populate categories or top 10 lists yes. when they launched. There was yeah. like come some categories with one app, so they just right. chose to hide them. How many are there total? Apps. Were there a total on launch? Under 1,000, and there's over 1,000 now. Yeah, They're, it's growing fast. Well, to wit, there are three Twit apps now. Um, <laughs> and none of them official, but all of them great. Uh, one free, $2.99. Uh, and I uh, highly recommend you buy all three. Or yeah. you, you download the free one, then you buy the other two. Uh, actually, one of the things that I thought was really cool about the fourth generation Apple TV is how it handles audio. Uh, in previous generations of Apple TV, obviously, there's the optical out uh, for optical audio port on the third generation Apple TV. But the fourth generation Apple TV is a little unique in that uh, it actually has built in airplay support um, for uh, lo like lossless airplay uh connection so that there's no delay between the airplay speaker and what's on your screen which is kind of fantastic so if you have your airplay say your sonos system hooked up to an airport express or even if you have a sonos play bar and you have it hooked up to a previous generation of your apple tv you can actually go into the fourth generation apple tv's audio menu and change the audio source from tv to whatever AirPlay source it is. And you can even do that on the fly while you're watching your videos. That's pretty cool. Really cool. That's yeah. really cool. One of the one of the biggest underrated features, I think, on the on No, the I just uh, I have it hooked via HDMI to my A V receiver, which mm -hmm. is probably for people who have big setups that could be that's probably the most likely. And it yes. uh, by the way it does five one beautifully. Getting great surround sound out of it. Seven point one too. Which I'm I sure it like. does, yeah. 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 I'll have to buy two more speakers to find out. Yeah. I really recommend that people go get the uh, uh, read the Apple Online User Guide. There's a lot of, about the interface that isn't really intuitive, oh. uh, but it's easy, but it's not intuitive. Like uh, if you, you have to be one of those people who, who's a button masher, like double tapping the home button brings up like an iOS six, uh, iOS seven style, yeah. right? Uh, app switcher, so you can quickly go from oh. you know two different apps without having without without having to bounce into the uh, the home page first. Uh, you can also, uh, I, I was trying to remember whether or not the older Apple TV supports Bluetooth audio out, but whether it does or not, the new one also supports Bluetooth audio. So if you want to not disturb your partner in bed while you're watching TV, you can you know, do uh, wireless headphones with it. This is like old, it's also fantastic. One here. Yeah, yeah, that too. There's, there's so much really cool. It, it, you really should go through settings and just go through every single one of these menus. There's so much accessibility uh, options that are built in there that it is a slam dunk for people who need extra options because that's certainly not something that Roku and others are doing a lot of great work with. You can make your own closed captioning style if you don't like the built-in. It's yeah. so cool. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to read this. I wish they did. I guess nobody puts this stuff in the box anymore, but... There's a, and there's and you yeah. know I discovered for Even, instance if I keep pressing the menu button I get to the screensaver which is really nice yeah, yep. yeah. but you have well, to kind of discover it right they're, they're all kind of, there are lots lots of cool tweaks uh, I mean I'll, I'll it's, it's it's damning with faint praise to say that they made it an improvement over the old Apple TV but I, a lot of the stuff that I appreciate about it is like you could always reorder the icons on the launcher menu. But the Apple deck of icons was always sacrosanct. So, but now you, if you want Netflix, Hulu, and HBO Go to be on the very, very top, no problem. Just move right in there. Yeah. You can say, find me funny horror movies. Yeah. It's, uh, and those screensavers also, they're going to update those. So you can enable it when you, when you sign in to oh, update those. And they're out with I helicopters and drones and they're oh. filming. They are so nice. So they're the beautiful. John Coates, of course, immediately uh, made a uh, app that I'm sure highly illegally... <laughs> connects to the servers because this stuff is served to you 
They say, what is it, 600 megabytes? Uh, could be as yeah. much as 600 megabytes a day. A month. A month. Okay, that's okay. not so bad. That's why there's a, there's an option that you can say when, how frequently should I connect to that server and get updates to these things. You can actually just say just once a month. Don't, yeah. <laughs> please don't bother. It's please called don't. it's called aerial. And while this looks like a still picture, if you look at the cars on the bridge, they're yeah. slowly moving. But there's they're so much really potential slow. here. Like uh, make a version of News app that prioritizes video, or start making apps that you right. put the Apple TV in a classroom or a meeting room and all the iPad. Because there's a yoga app already, and Trinity will remember the name because I never do. But uh, you it takes the heart rate from your Apple Watch and puts it up on the monitor while you're exercising. Oh, that's cool. Just all the stuff working together. Mm -hmm. I can imagine a bunch of kids in classrooms, all of them with iPads and the, the Apple TV in the front and all of them working on things. I mean, it's, it's, it's really cool that this stuff is just linked together. Yeah. Some of this is plane is it, footage. Or, Some of this is obviously drone, as you mentioned, drone footage. There's a, you're flying really low across vegetation in Hawaii and it's really clear that that's not an airplane. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, it's really, this is, this is amazing footage. Um, the screensaver is available for Macintoshes. It's called Arial, and he has John has put out a beta version of it that lets you cache the videos, which I would recommend because <laughs> I have a feeling Apple might cut off his access at any time. Although they haven't so far. Um, I mean, they're super proud of these. These they are should gorgeous. Be. They should be proud. They should make this on the a Mac screensaver. So anyway, if, since they haven't. Ariel is the name of it. OS 10 Golden Gate will have a missing screen. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, wouldn't that be a great screensaver? Hey, the new iPad is here. The new iPad is here. And I trust you have all uh, received your units in the mail. So Indeed. big. So, so big. <laughs> so big. So we big. hold them up and no one can see any of us. Uh, and then if you put it in, this is, uh, they. when I went to the Apple store, because I ordered it that night, and then they said, well, just pick it up tomorrow morning in the Apple store. They didn't have the um, Apple keypad, key, you know, keyboard. That one. So they, I got the Creative, uh, got which actually I like better because it's, first of all, $20 cheaper, but it also has special um, iPad buttons. You know, it's got a home, and I love the search button, which is great. But mine is laser ablated taffeta, Leo. I mean, just Oh, yeah, that's jealous. pretty sweet, huh? So, just like in Project Runway, taffeta. That's, that's, a, <laughs> taffeta. that's, a, that's, a, that's a hard material to, to you know keep control many, of, as Tim Gunn will tell you. Do you know how many prom dresses and, and bridesmaid dresses had to give their <laughs> lives to make this keyboard? Is that is that uh, taffeta on yours too, Andy? Uh, yes. <laughs> well, I, I, I didn't go to prom, so I don't know what taffeta feels so like. So that's a fabric, because it looks like yeah. plastic. That's it's, fabric. It's laser-bladed no, it fabric. So instead of yeah, having scissors or butterflies, it just has the domes and then the structure of the fabric <sighs> that gives it its... So it's a right. chiclet keyboard. Let's say. Let's let's tell the truth. Um, I guess it feels a latte like it. it feels like one. But yeah, it's what, a little what's bit interesting more about though. that keyboard though is that it's all molded. Right. Um, yep. I talked to to Apple before, uh, just before th this was all released, and it was fascinating to see um, that there's no actual mechanism in there. You know, which is something we're not used to with a keyboard. Obviously, there's a mechanism in there to make the key go up and down. There's not. And are there switches? What's in there? There's no it's, switches, it, but there are. It's domes. molded. It's just molded plastic, or molded. You know, fancy stuff. Taffeta. <laughs> taffeta, taffeta. Something. Uh, something. Blend. <laughs> taffeta. 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 So and they can't put wires because you have to fold it, and a wire would get crimped if you folded it. So they did this thing where they actually. Uh, almost like a circuit board, they have power, ground, and data all going through the actual fabric itself. Which oh, is that's interesting. Yeah. Wow. Well, this is a much more conventional keyboard. <laughs> it just yeah, has keys that when you push them, it triggers a switch. And it's very it's a lot like the MacBook keyboard. It lights up in the back, which is nice, powered by the connector, so it's not a battery-powered uh, yeah. keyboard. And then you get this honking big case. And by the way, if you thought the <laughs> iPad was big, wrap it in the Logitech Create case. And now yeah. it's bigger than a MacBook. It's like the size of my MacBook Pro. It's huge and heavy. Yeah, but that's what if you want like a really good keyboard. I mean, this is this is every bit as good as what I've got on my MacBook Pro here. Yeah. Whereas the whereas this other keyboard, it's, less it's so. fine. Yeah, I mean, I I could I could. This is so this is so comfortable to use and yeah. backlit and it's got all these function keys too. I mean, I was uh, I, the first day that I was using it as a, a full-time device. I was just sort of subconsciously like tickling this part here, yeah. expecting there oh, to yeah, be a expect trackpad. Yeah, expect a trackpad, don't you? Yeah. And that's and lots of people say that. With this, it's I mean, it'll do, and it's great because it's so compact. Much lighter, yeah. It's it's also it's also great because unlike the Create keyboard, you can easily slap it on and take it off again, and when it's on, 
uh, when it's on, it's like practically nothing. I think that the, the ideal thing for this iPad is to just keep it as thin as possible so that right. when you just want to have it, even just having it flat on the desktop and interacting with this huge, huge control surface. Uh, I was in, I had my, I had my stand with me. I had a whole bunch of stuff with me. I was in Starbucks, but I found that I kind of like just having it in, you know, 2001, a space odyssey mode where there's just this rectangle of interactive glass, uh, almost level with the, with the tabletop. Uh, it's really is a whole new, as, as, for something that's so familiar, it really does feel like a whole new way of uh, using an iPad. <coughs> Andy, yeah. what do you think of split screen? Love it. This is, yeah, this yeah. is everything that I had been hoping for. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, one of the biggest things I loved about Windows 8, one of the few things I really loved about Windows 8, was the ability to, I don't necessarily need to have a whole bunch of overlapping windows. I really just want to have one main, for instance, one main pane that has the stuff I'm creating and then something I'm keeping an eye on. Uh, and you can have that. You can have two equal columns like you see Leo doing there. And you can have my... Uh, uh, one iPad size screen, one iPhone size screen, and then yeah. even a floating uh, video window that you can right. resize that floats over everything else. That's right. really all I need. Right. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, for me, and you, I think any conversation about using this like a notebook has to underscore the, your personal quirks. For me, this is emphatically as good, if not better, than a MacBook Air. Really? Yeah, I will oh, say that. I never, mama. I never... I've come close to buying a MacBook Air or even the 2015 MacBook just because I just feel like I need to have something that's lighter and and uh, lighter than my MacBook uh, Pro. Uh, but it, it always felt like this isn't it isn't an improvement over what I've got now. This is for the for the things that I would be using a MacBook Air for. Again, I would not be using it as my 24/7 only Macintosh. Uh, the MacBook Air, the the the, the i the ugh, iPad Pro. Uh, is a better solution for me. Yeah. Wow. Funny, I have both the I have the iPad Pro and I have the 2015 MacBook and I use split screen on both. They're very similar in many ways, but I have workflows that I still prefer the MacBook, like things that I want multiple windows and drag and drop and all that kind of stuff because I've been doing it for a decade and it's hardwired into my system and I'm so fast that way. But using, I I just, when I, I went to Toronto yesterday for the Apple Pay stuff and I just took the iPad Pro with me and uh -huh. I forgot it was an iPad Pro. I was sitting in a coffee yeah. shop uh, writing the story and three hours later, I, I forgot that I was using an iPad Pro until I decided to get up and then I unfolded it and I was just, I was using the Apple keyboard. I was just typing away. I was were you using pages. What were you using to type into notes? I've been using the notes. I, I've been trying. I, I tried to start with the baseline. Like I wanted. I've been sketching in notes too, and I wanted to do just the simplest thing I could at first. And then after this, I'm going to use Coda and I'm going to use Procreate. Right. But I wanted to give myself a couple days with the built-in apps and really see what they. Because I feel like the built-in apps are always the baseline. They give you the idea of of the minimum you can do with the system. Right. And I was really pleasantly surprised. And I also, Notes syncs with everything. It doesn't just sync with other iOS devices. I change something in Notes here. If When I do go home to my Mac, all that stuff is just there. So I have five or six articles that I just wrote in there that are just as valid right now in the Notes app on this iMac. Yeah. Uh, and I really, really like that sort of, the whole package with this was just so great. And then I folded it up, pulled out the pencil and started sketching while I waited for my now, plane. Now, now wait a minute, on the pencil thing. Yes. How the hell did you get a pencil? Uh, <laughs> Apple Apple provided pencils yeah. to people so, reviewing uh, them. If I'm not the only person. The pencil, I, I, I got online pretty quick. It was like four in the morning our time. And yep. there were no pencils to be had. It said December, you'll saying, get yours December 7th. I, I think that once you, like, like all really great things, once you get it, you, f you will forget about how long you had to wait. You had to wait for it. It's amazing. It's fun. I was using the notes app to sketch with. I don't know if this can be seen or not, but. Here, go, go full screen on. Oh, look at that. Oh, I saw that. You posted that. That's yeah, Tim Cook I, announcing the iPad Pro. And, and I just started trying um, because... But it, you're it an artist. Really... See, for me, it's not going to help. I'm an, I'm, an idiot. I'm an idiot. I've got no... I started... Uh, like a, uh, This is a friend of mine. So oh, that's I a great picture. color stuff. So as an artist, this is a great platform, right? Leo, there's two things about it that make it terrific. And uh, just for some background, I went to school for art. I drew every day after school right. for hours, Ooh. went to college in a fine arts program. And then I worked in design where I used Wacom tablets for over 10 years. And this this is the closest thing I've ever felt to when I used to just draw with a pencil on paper. And it's not exactly the same way, but it's super close. And the nice thing is with a program like Procreate, um, 
I used to do all the kind of art, like I did oils and passed out. And then just go, going to the store, buying the stuff, coming, setting up, cleaning up. After, it, it became, as time got more and more constrained, You just I, I just didn't take the stuff out anymore. It's sitting yeah. in a closet now. And with this, I just pick a brush, start there, and now yeah, I'm doing a great. watercolor. Yeah. And there's, it's yeah. like paperless Would art. it be, if they made a pencil version for an iPad Air or a, a mini, would it be iPad as good? Air 3. So the technology you need. So uh, no, I understand, years, but I'm saying next generation. Let's say yes, they make. Yeah. Do you need all that real estate? Is the question. For an, I, I would love, I would love an iPad Air three with yeah. the same type of 240 right. hertz refresh rate and the electromagnetic stuff in it. I, to be honest, I would love this in an in an iPhone six plus. And I know right. some people are complaining about the lack of Touch ID, but um, these are all different technologies. Like the force press in the watch is different than the force press in the Mac is different than 3D Touch is different than the pressure sensitive pen. Right. And you start putting all those things together and you got really thick, really heavy screens. So they have to sort of pick and choose for now. But in a perfect world, I would have a little like um, field notes version on my iPhone six plus where I could sit there and doodle out in the park or something. I, I'm a huge fan of this technology. Yeah. yeah. It's it's just amazing. Renee is absolutely right. I mean, I'm not real. I'm not really an artist, but it just allows you to play and make mistakes. And I've never like drawn with color, but I mean, if because I just don't understand how like mixing colors works and how the tools work. The fact that you can just screw around, uh, work based on a photo, and just make mistakes and make them very easily. This is it's it's like Procreate has become like my favorite game, my favorite iPad game ever. Because you're just got some time to kill, and you just want to fool around. And every time I've, every time I've sat down thinking I was just going to fool around for a second because oh, I want to test this out, or I just want to see if this works. It's like three hours later, and <laughs> now I've created something that maybe isn't great, but I'm sort of like now invested in. It's just amazing. Oh, and, and, and I and think, pencils I, I, part I think, of it. I think the thing that you have to remember with with the pencil, what what Apple was. Uh, able to do was was reduce any latency and that's the big part right. about um, the pencil now when I when I spoke with Apple about um, how the pencil works between the pencil and the screen and and the technology that's built into both of those the the screen actually <clears throat> tries to um, predict where you're gonna go so if you're drawing a circle it'll predict that you're drawing a circle and the pressure that you have on on that line, and it will intelligently go back and backfill uh, the the line and the prediction, so that it's it's exact to to what you actually did. So if at the end you put a little bit more pressure on the pencil, it will backfill that. Now that's not something you can actually see because it's happening so quickly that y you don't see it happening, and and. That's incredible to think about that, that it's predicting where you're going to go, then goes back and backfills where you actually went, but does it in, in an amount of time that's not visible to you as a user. That's crazy. Jim was just talking about Apple Music for a second, and it occurs to me there's this theme going around because Jim is a power Apple Music user, and it's been horrible for him. I just use Siri to play stuff, and it's been fantastic for me. Uh, people who have big collections of media on Drobos or or other devices, they're 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 really upset with Apple TV because it stops some forms of MP4 from working, and the home app is still like the the computer's app is still a mess, and they really can't access their collections. But I just use it to stream stuff, so I'm fine. Uh, Brent Simmons just did a post about his father's ongoing issues with mail, and he's a super intelligent guy and mail uh, just won't work. John Gruber um, and uh, Matt Grants were talking about how things just won't sync. Like you put in a tech shortcut and it just doesn't, doesn't sync. And we've gotten past this time where things either work or they don't work. But like the more you use a product, it looks like the more pain you're getting from that product. Yeah. Well, as well, long as they're updating it. My, my music um, uh, doesn't sync between my Mac and my iOS device. I mean, Apple Music today updated the fact that you could download uh, and make available offline your music. We're five months in and they're just getting around <laughs> yeah. to this now. Yeah. A we, few we're... weeks ago, I went on a, a, a trip. I, I downloaded all of my Guns N' Roses for a short flight. And I get on the plane, hit airplane mode, eight songs out of 100 oh. actually downloaded. So Apple is finally getting to this now. So when I get to... Uh, uh, to where I was going in order to make sure that I had music for the flight home, I downloaded Google Play, yeah. subscribed, 
downloaded my music and it worked yeah. flawlessly. Now you look at Apple TV, they updated, updated Apple TV today. I haven't tried this yet, but when Apple TV first came out, um, I went to Apple music and added a song. Sure. Okay. You can add a song. No problem. Then I went to that album and it looks like I have the whole album, um, uh, you know, add it to my music when I don't, I only have one song. So I go to, to remove that album or that song, you know, when you press the button and it comes up with this screen and says, remove from my library. I press that button a hundred times and nothing <laughs> happens. So then I go to cancel and the song is there. It's like Apple wants me to have this song. No, I don't want that song. So now I'm going to go out as soon as we're done here and try that and see if that bug is fixed. But there's so many bugs, so yeah. many bugs. Well, and the worse, they're different for different people. So it's very hard to right. predict what's going to happen. And the last time Apple had this many bugs in, in an app, they wrote an apology letter, and that was with Maps. Yeah. So I, I don't know what they're doing here. I mean, I added... Led Zeppelin 1 and Led Zeppelin 2 to Apple Music on my Mac, on my Mac, it changed the names of them to Led Zeppelin Mothership, both oh. of them, both albums, oh. even though they're different albums. Oh. But on my iOS devices, they were still uh, Led Zeppelin 1 and 2. What? I, I thought that my account synced. I thought that the Mac and iOS Talk to each were other. the same. Yeah, apparently they don't. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, I'm very angry um, with Apple music, just because I care so much about my music and I care, I, I believe in Apple. I believe that what they do is, uh, I think that they do great things. They innovate. What they've done with Apple music is not innovation. Uh, they're, they're playing catch up and, and they're not even doing it right. And so and I'm guessing that the fact that it, they've increased the match limit on, uh, Apple, uh, iTunes match to a hundred thousand tracks is not going to change your I, I don't I don't care about I, I want them to fix the problems. Yeah, make it work. And you, I want them you know, to stick a hundred tracks right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, get get ten tracks right. I mean, <laughs> we're five months into this, and I I can't even add music to the library. And keep in mind that I'm not asking Apple Music to do anything that Apple didn't tell me it could do. That's the, I'm not saying that Apple should do this great, wonderful thing that it can't do. They told me it could do this. I'm just asking it to do it. And it can't. Did you see the, the Google podcast terms and conditions, Leo? <laughs> eh, who cares? Why? What are they? <laughs> that they have the right to add post roll to your video. Post roll, I couldn't share. care less. I don't, yeah. you know, I don't think anybody makes it to the end of our shows anyway. <laughs> if they want to put an ad at the end there, God bless them. More power. Is, to is them. that true? Butts, 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 butts. <laughs> We're testing that theory right now. <laughs> you can say anything you want.